What's up, everyone? Welcome to After School Program. My name is Connor Hine. With me, as always, my good friend, Zach McHale. Hello. This episode is Matt Duncan. Matt Duncan's been a trip leader and planner for Overland Summers for the past three years, a company that leads domestic and international hiking trips for kids fourth through twelfth grade. In this episode, we talk about why Matt loves bikepacking, the differences in doing a trip solo or with a group, and his run-in with a bear while riding at 60 miles an hour. We also hear Matt's hilarious story of hitching a ride across the Canadian border through Craigslist. Matt then tells us how his experience in Austria made him think twice about pursuing a career in the military. He gets into what it was like growing up as a higher energy kid, what he's learned from all of his travels, and knowing when it's time to move on. All right, Matt, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, So you just recently went on a solo bikepacking trip to Vermont. How was that? First one ever. Yeah, it was... uh... It was pretty sweet. I've been... You were the first one ever to bike solo in Vermont? Yeah, the first one. Oh, wow. So write that down. That's Matt cool. Duncan, first Vermont solo Got it. backpacker. First thing Got in your bio. Bike packer, yeah. Um, but no, I've been pretty much on my bike since all this COVID stuff started in May. Um, but doing it with my roommate who I worked with out in like super Northwest Massachusetts and was biking with him for a while then hurt my back and came back rehabbed and then i decided after I mean, you didn't just hurt your back you like pulled a disc <laughs> yeah the herniated yeah <laughs> yeah it was yeah, not a big deal it wasn't great <laughs> not a big deal for someone who just rides their bike everywhere yeah. yeah i was on top of the world and then i was laying on my parents couch for about a month well yeah, yeah and you guys threw that trip together pretty last minute yeah because we didn't know we i mean like we had an idea that the summer probably wasn't going to happen. So we planned trips for kids to go on like these adventure, hiking, biking trips around the world. And we like pull kids from all over. So when the virus started to break out, we figured that we weren't going to be running a summer. Mm-hmm. Um, and then shortly after that, the office closed down. We were all furloughed and we kind of decided to like have our summer. and. What we both love the most is bike packing. So, yeah, we kind of threw it together with this route that we found online. And maybe like a week later, we like both popped home for a little bit. And then a week later, we were driving from New Jersey in my car straight out to Montana to start this trip. And how long were you guys on there until you're back? At? Uh, we were out there for about a month biking around. So we did, we got Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and then in Colorado, it was like on the easiest day too. Mm. unloaded. We were on a rail trail. So it was like no elevation whatsoever. And all of a sudden my back just went and gave it like a day icing, stretching, but I could not move at all. So then like two days later, I flew back home to New Jersey and left my car out there with Connor. <laughs> right. I was left him with the car. Yeah, I was like, yeah, you take it all. You take everything and I'll go rehab. Pretty nice car, too, to just leave out. Yeah, I mean, he, he yeah. deserved it. Yeah, you trust him. Drove half. So uh, on this bike trip, just lay out like a day, what a day looks like for you. Yeah, because I, I have no different, like I have no understanding of what like, the difference yeah. is between hiking and... Well, this that, is good because like, you're about to come with me, so... Right, yeah. So um, like a day like go through like how like how you have water and sometimes you don't have water yeah i'd say all in all it's the best possible day that one person can have it's you wake up you're pretty much like on schedule with the sun because you're you're in a tent so as soon as as soon as the sun rises you're up out of your tent and you cook right there um, out of what? Just like a cast iron? Like- out of like a little jet boil stove. So nice. It's like super light, compact. You can carry it around with you. And breakfast is almost. Yeah, because everything you bring with you has to fit on your bike. Yeah, and like three bags. Yeah. And you try not to have a backpack. Right. Um, and are you thinking about weight? as you're packing these things or like nah not when you're as strong as a biker <laughs> yeah I forgot my bad <laughs> yeah, not when you can put it all on no, your but back like at some point <laughs> at some points you're like climbing no, pretty yeah, big hills totally and like thinking... if you have like 60 pounds worth of gear on your bike right. that's gonna suck yeah no it's like you're pretty much counting ounces when you're packing your bike right um, which is why the jet boil like super small stove is awesome right now um, could you turn that into like a propulsion system for your bike yeah you worst, easily worst case scenario. just get okay. to each side 
tape duct right. tape under your shoes and you're flying word um but no it's like it's really different from overnight uh backpacking because almost every day you're like traveling through smaller towns or just somewhere that you can like buy and restock on fuel right. and food water and stuff like that so you're not carrying nearly as much weight as okay. you would be in like an overnight because you're covering more ground yeah because you're going well because you're popping through these towns and yeah and you're on roads as opposed to backwards trails right. yeah so like when you're hiking you'd be hiking and maybe you'd hit like 10 20 20 miles at most a day right and with bike packing you can like you can hit pretty easily 80 miles yeah a day. i was gonna say it seems like you're averaging like in the 70s yeah you can cruise which is yeah. really nice because and then you're also like having real food and i don't know are you guys staying at different places or are you typically um, sleeping in the tent mostly in the tent okay i'd say there were a few nights where or like a few days where we were looking at the weather then we'd be like oh shit there that's a huge storm and it's going to be super cold we're gonna get we're gonna like get to this one town so we can have like a pavilion. Um, I started to get really into baseball fields and dugouts and camping in there. Mm. Um, but then if you're like really really want to get out of the elements, then like a motel or something like that. Right. I could um, just imagine. every morning you starts you with you the groundskeeper just, like, yeah. chasing Matt. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're like little kids just coming and there's Matt hobo looking <laughs> with his bike in the dugout. Well, that was the best thing about the pandemic. All sports oh, yeah, no shut down. <laughs> So I yeah, really the was the one yours. homeless person yeah. in the dugout waking yeah. up. Yeah. Um, Have you seen this man? Yeah. <laughs> He's been hopping from town to town, local town. Loves the dugouts. <laughs> yeah, but no, and then you pretty much bike until dinner. And a lot Were you of times, planning like, out your stops? Yeah. Like where you wanted to stay unless something occurred? Every day, pretty much. You were you aiming for like before you start? Were like you aiming for like state parks starts. that like let you camp in, or what was your <laughs> strictly baseball field? Or, no, or dude, were, you, really on, were you on Google That's... Maps just looking for the diamonds? <laughs> yeah, it's like zoom out all the way and yeah. say search this area for <laughs> yeah baseball fields, town parks, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dugouts, pavilions. Just you and predators were doing that. I yeah, think. no, the keywords. <laughs> um, but no, it's it's awesome. And then the solo trip was absolutely insane like totally different than right. biking with someone for sure and there are definitely like pros and cons to it but um i don't know i enjoyed it because of like how i came back into it like after my injury i've right. been with i was like biking with connor and a few other people all summer and then i heard from connor after i left he was like you have to try solo bike packing I don't know if that was him, like telling me, like, "Yo, you suck." Like, right? Because yeah, you well, leave probably him not out there yeah. with the car, yeah. and he goes, "Yo, Matt, how about I'm you just never go doing this yeah. off yeah. by yourself?" I have everything bike. I need now. Yeah. You're good to just go solo. Was there was there any of like was your mindset kind of also because it kind of seems like it was perfect because I don't think after a major back injury you'd want to like fall back in with a group. Yeah, that was the you'd other feel thing. Feel like you were slowing him down or exactly. There was like yeah. no pressure for. Right. That must have been nice hitting a certain mileage or like going right. a certain speed right. so yeah it was very relaxed yeah which is well, another well that's also a question i was thinking of while you were talking about backpacking was it how comp does it get competitive like yeah there's this it's thing gotta, called right? it it doesn't have to be competitive it can certainly be like the most relaxed day. I mean, knowing you and Connor, I think it would but be yeah, competitive. But yeah, we yeah. like to throw in these like com little competitive aspects, but it gets the most competitive because of an app called Strava, which is like this fitness tracking app that's like heavy on social media presence. Mm -hmm. um, and there are these things within Strava that are like the record for how fast you can do certain portions of a trail or a road is this just a biking fitness app or is it it's a all, fitness it's app all, no it's all like biking running uh, so it's just sailing, a fitness app that has. Oh, that's and cool. you can add yeah. your friends and stuff and you can see their Post times pictures. or how active they they are and you can race them and yeah. stuff oh and you have an, this too z uh, i got it for a little bit but yeah. then i just didn't really bike that much right. and i was like i kind of run until i don't feel like it anymore and right. i turn around yeah so. right. is this available in the app store available it in the app store oh, wow and it's getting better because they just i mean 
they made it so you have to pay for a membership now, right. but like mm. all of their services are so much better. Um, but yeah, Strava it on the way over here. Well, and it's a verb now too, huh? It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, it's Google, it's like Google, Google. that's when you it's know like you Google. need to jump on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like uh, yeah, get in now. When it becomes yeah, yeah. in in the language. Just Where, like, weren't you telling weren't you telling us uh, a while ago that like within certain towns too there's like record holders and that gets kind of competitive oh yeah i mean i had can you message each other on the apps or did you or is this oh yeah first yeah. thing matt does breaks the record then kicks the guy's ass who set the <laughs> yeah, record I'm let's meet, let's this meet up field. i'm immediately talking shit if i if i get someone's record <laughs> taking but, over town to town yeah no there's some good trash talking i'm actually uh i've gone back and forth with someone that i've never even met here in my hometown and i think he's probably like 45 or 50 and i'm going after his record probably at least once a week <laughs> and this dude just talks mad shit on me every, every time attempt. that i go for it and don't can, get it can he see your attempts oh yeah he oh, sees it, it every time because wow. i friend i like messaged him one time right and i called him out and told him I was coming for his record. <laughs> so and I, I haven't been able to get it yet. So I stopped by his house uh, the other day, and he told me that you'll never break it because back when he set that record, the roads were freshly paved. Oh. So oh. I knew they were wow. something. Because yeah. so that's the be, thing. I was like, like the other there week. should be an asterisk next to that on Strava. Do they do <laughs> yeah. asterisks? Dude, that's where. So that was the house that I dropped the beer off at. Uh, and he told me I was running away because I was too afraid oh, to meet right. a legend. Right. right, you didn't meet him face to face. Yeah, we I've were, never. We Met him. Dude, in a hurry. Met him. He'll never meet the local legends oh. unless he's already beat there. Oh, oh, you I drop be beer the off and run away. I'm wow. so afraid. Were you dropping the beer off as like a peace offering because of all the trash talk that you didn't live up to? No, I'm hoping just to fatten him up. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, no more <laughs> records for him. <laughs> no more records. Um, but g going back to the solo stuff, so yeah. tell us the difference between you know riding with people versus riding with your, like you said, it's more convenient for you. Yeah. I mean, because you like, choose your days. Well, you were talking talking about like hit on the biggest thing is like whenever there's a decision to make during the day you don't have to figure out what everyone else wants to do or right. like how they're feeling you're kind of just like doing exactly what you want to do right and there's no time or energy wasted on like what's best for the group which is really nice um but then there's also that aspect and i realized this like almost immediately at the start of my trip where something awesome happens or like you see this beautiful overlook and you like turn cause you want to talk about it mm -hmm. and there's no one there to do that with. So yeah. it's like those moments feel a little less special, right? but it's like you have to give something for right. not having to deal with other people, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And, and what's cool with biking cause you got me in on into it a little bit this summer. Um, but is yeah, it can, can kind of can, be, can we talk about that? Have you heard about, the first time Zach got on a bike, he biked 112 miles. Whoa. No, just 100. No. We did a, we, yeah, we beat 100. We it set 100, it right to 100. 100 Still. It was 102. Yeah, we, we, went, we oh. rode down to LBI. Um, I couldn't believe it. Which was like 40-something yeah. with, <laughs> with our other buddy, with uh, Eric. And uh, oh so he was, uh, you know, I was able to, to keep up with Matt, and he was kind of going at a decent pace for right. two guys who were newer. But um, what kind of bike did, do you have? A road bike? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I, okay. I used my dad's. Like he got okay. he got a road bike because oh, nice. um, you have to go somewhat quickly to get a hundred miles in yeah. during yeah. daylight. Yeah, you can't just hop on a regular bike like that. Yeah. You, you'll be gassed. But so yeah, sure. so Eric also had one because his brother did uh, like triathlons and oh, stuff. Right. And so Eric uh, he keeps asking me about the gears. He's like, dude, how do I how do I change the this is, how do I change the gears? Or the, he kept calling them brakes, and I was like, you mean the gears, right? He's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so eventually... How do I take like, these brakes off? As we're going further and further down, we're you know hitting mile 10, mile 20, mile 30. Like Eric's really falling behind to the point where... And he's an time, athletic dude. Like, yeah. yeah. It's, I was wondering what else was going on because he was dropping back right. How many bit. beers did he have the night before? Right, <laughs> yeah. And so by the time we get to like mile, whatever, 30, Matt and I sort of just like... <laughs> it sucked for him, too, because we're like, we're waiting for him at different different mile interval stops right. and then he would get to us and then you're like all right sweet now right, we're good yeah, to go take and yeah. he's like going. gassed um so finally we just like went over the bridge we made it to the island and then uh you know eric comes over gets there we go to my backyard we have a couple of beers and then i was like yeah matt like i'm feeling pretty good like i'm down to go back with you because i knew he was planning on going 
back to Metfirm. Yep. And uh, Eric was like, You went back no and way. forth in one day. Yeah. Down and back. Whoa. To and, the ocean. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, so Eric was like, no way. And he yeah. got a ride yeah, home with his dad. All, right. but so, All the uh, way to Medford or to his house? In back to, yeah, back to Medford. His, <laughs> his, his dad was down there. But so what happened was they ended up looking at the bike like the next week. Both his back brakes were on. They were locked the entire time he was oh riding his bike. God. So this kid's Rubbing fighting a dead back wheel oh the entire God. time. And That's- like... But, like, staying close enough to us that I was like, that can't be the problem. Like, there's right. no way he's biking through brakes right, right now. Yeah. And so he said if he knew that was the issue the entire time, he would have bailed in five miles. Right. But because he thought it was just because he was just lazy him? and out of yeah. shape. Like, bad gears or <laughs> yeah. Yeah, out of shape. Yeah. He, oh, he no. ended up powering through it the oh, whole time. No. And he's like, and then the next day he's like, my legs are fried. <laughs> how do you, he's like, I can't how move. How do you not right get now? off the bike and look at it though? Dude, I don't know. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> that's on him. Hindsight. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, that was when you did that hundred miler. I was like, all right, you're one hundred percent like ready to get into bike packing. And because you, you were loving it too the whole oh, time. Oh, it's really fun because it's like it's kind of a group thing, but also when you're on the road, like it can be a very uh, quiet solo thing. Right. Like Matt would have yeah. his speakers on him and his bike up there, right. but I could hardly keep up uh, to listen to it. Right. So you're very in your own head, and like you're just kind of with your own thoughts. So it's very like relaxed, and you're kind of just going at your own pace, or whoever wants to set the pace. You right. know, it can that's be a, mindless. Probably yeah, sometimes. it's pretty yeah. mindless, and you're just kind of you know you're looking around. You're shot. just kind of unwinding a lot of different things that are going on right. in your head. Um, and then you like pull, and we were talking about this. You, we like pulled up to each other, and then had like unbelievable conversations. Yeah, that we I feel like we haven't had like those deep conversations for probably like a few years. Yeah, because yeah. it's just like you're you're not really using any more energy than you have to for like barriers almost Mm -hmm. so you're just kind of like all walls are down you can talk about whatever you want and then if it got too deep i just pedal away from zach right (laughs) zach got way too weird yeah Yeah. so it's kind of like you can just like you're just like thinking and then you can kind of just go back and discuss and then eventually you'll kind of part away again and kind of like think on what each other said about it and stuff but really cool yeah it's really it's really interesting man it's definitely you know different than hiking but it's it's a fun thing in its own. It's right. fun how much ground you cover and stuff like that. So, uh, what are what are the challenges of solo? Um, it's a lot of like obviously there's the the camaraderie. Camaraderie. Why can't I say that word? Someone say it it's for me. Comrades. Yeah. Com- comrades. Comrades. Yeah. I guess they go hand in hand. Mm. Um, they're of the same Latin camaraderie. Yeah. Right? We could do the rest Scholar. of this in Latin if we wanted the dead language. Yeah, yeah we'll do that. We'll, we'll resurrect it. The three comrades. Um, but what are the challenges of of the solo aspect? Uh, or I'd are say, there none? There are no challenges. Yeah, there's certainly challenges, and I think the and I, it's probably different for everyone. But one thing that like, and I guess it's not even a challenge, but something that I had to like deal with and kind of accept almost is like just being in your own head for that long right and not being able to like bounce thoughts or ideas off other people where it's just like you have an idea that pops in your head and you kind of have to like think about it and get through it on your own Mm -hmm. which is nice but then also really it's like mentally exhausting almost sure for the for the deeper thoughts that pop into your head, because it's the same thing with anything, and you can kind of get stuck on stuck on something and yeah. just like spin and an end to it way, if you're not as a solo it out. biker. You're not. There's no way you're getting away from it. Right. Like you're on the road, and it's a lot like biking when you're not on trail and like wondering where your wheel's gonna go, and then you're just on a road. Is a lot like meditation, where it's right. like the only thing you have to think about is continue like continue to move your legs and pedal. But most of the time, you're just, like, thinking about whatever. Um, so that was definitely, like, one of the challenges. Not even a challenge. It was, like, one of the harder parts of being a, or doing a solo trip. Mm-hmm. And then other than that, just, like, worrying that something's going to happen to you. Right. Or, like, your bike's going to get by yourself. totally destroyed and, yeah. yeah, no one's there with you. Right. With, like, maybe the extra tool that you needed right. and you didn't bring it, so... Having right. that in the back of your head, I think it also like changes the way you make decisions. Right. But well, going off that, what what is the craziest thing, either solo or non-solo, that's happened to you on a bike ride? I think I know what it is. What? 
<laughs> well, I don't want to. You tell the story, but what happened when you rounded that corner? Was it in Montana where you were oh. first in line? Yeah, there, I guess. Oh, I mean, I was there anything crazy? That, cra- that? that was the craziest thing on the bike. You definitely heard the story about when we went across the border. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Canada, but oh, I guess yeah. we, that's that's yeah. a totally different yeah, thing. No, we weren't this, on we weren't on bikes then. No, so. yeah, no. I want to. Yeah, let's definitely dive bike. into this. I, I, um, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah I know. Okay, I know okay. what you're talking about. Yeah. So, uh, the, uh, what you guys were planning on going on a trip? Wait, um, which one am I? Well, no, no, no. Which no, one no. am I telling? Do, do you the border, heard, Do the border one later. Yeah, I don't think you've heard okay. this. This crazy. Let's let's stay on the let's stay on the bike for now. Yeah, go. So. This was this past summer in Montana, and I was biking with Connor O'Brien, who I've mentioned, and then this other woman who joined us, Emily Hamill, um, who's just like a beast, and both of them are super strong riders, and we were like pushing the pace almost every day, like a lot of climbing with distance, and this was the last day of like just like a week-long trip that we did. Um, and it was th- like the thing that we've all been looking forward to is a downhill, like a, I think it was like 30 miles of this gradual downhill mm, on a gravel nice. road in the back country of Montana. Like we were coming out of the woods. Not a pretty place I've heard. No, no, yeah. it's terrible. I tried to not look at the mm. surroundings, <laughs> keep my eyes down on my wheels. <laughs> it's like yeah. asphalt, finally something familiar. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was spectacular and so we stop and we're about to start this downhill and we like talk, talked about it and we're all just going to go our own pace because the downhill now and we're fully loaded bikes. So it's hard to like kind of stay together. And I've actually, how fast do you think you're going on these downhills? Like 30, like, what do you get up to? 35. Wow. So, uh, yeah, is that like, With a are you, are you like locked you, in then? Like you're not. Yeah, like, no, I mean, that's like why we stopped and talked about it okay. because that's the other thing I yeah, have. Does that get scared? I, I would imagine going 35 right? miles an hour. This is, so this is something that we've talked about. The people that scary. I bike with, I've never had a big bike crash. The biggest, like the scariest thing that's happened to me is I've, I was mountain biking one time and I put my bike into a tree and somehow went like right in between two trees and my wow. handlebars yeah. hit the trees but i just like went forward jesus christ oh, so you launched yeah launched through the trees oh my god but that's wow. like the biggest thing what do you mean that sounds pretty yeah. <laughs> that's just <laughs> like, like you know. i wasn't like yeah. injured i got launched through a field goal of trees yeah, yeah. <laughs> i wasn't injured at all i guess at the end of it well, that so, was lucky so there's a it's like known with especially these two that i've biked with a lot how i've never had a fall so i kind of like push it on downhills because i've i haven't had that fear of where like the pain of falling right. right so i usually go out in front on the downhills and push the pace and it was maybe 20 minutes into this downhill that we were all looking forward to can you get Dude. speed wobbles on a bike oh yeah 100 percent. because back in my longboarding days i was an excellent longboarder mm-hmm. all over town you'd get speed i would go wobbles I, all the time? Dude, I would go down hills and like you would get the speed wobbles and there'd be nothing you could do but jump off and hope you don't like crack your head and i was only yeah, probably no. going i was probably only going like 12 miles an hour <laughs> yeah. first That's... first time i ever rode an electric scooter when those got real hot in like, yeah. middle school uh-huh. and i went to bar this kids who's was brand <laughs> Go to the new biggest house in I town. Yeah. 15 miles an hour speed wobbles immediately oh, yeah. Yeah. like four houses down crash it comes yeah. back it's all nicked up you and go. Stuff. yeah <laughs> take it back but uh yeah speed wobbles are certainly a thing yeah but also 35 miles per hour is like not it's not that fast because you're on a gravel bike and you're fully weighed down so it doesn't feel fast hmm. okay. it's like a little bit it feels a little bit more intense because there's a lot of weight to control right but like on a road bike the fastest i've gone on a road bike is 64 miles per hour oh, oh my god which that was scary because i was like if i fall right now then i'm <laughs> going dead. to become yeah. an eracer yeah yeah like I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna be where where did you go 60 how down a hill down a mountain yeah in massachusetts a paved wow. mountain wow that's crazy yeah it was all right yeah, so, that was scary so you're going 35 miles an hour no going, speed wobbles yet nope and just like enjoying enjoying For 20 minutes enjoying that's a long time to be of not pedaling and you're going yeah. through it's like it's bliss like, yeah this is every single climb that you've had before this is all worth it now right and enjoying the beautiful vistas of montana yeah ripping it down and i turn the corner um 
And at this point, I'd say it, I'm in the front, Emily's mm-hmm. in the middle, and then Connor's in the back. And we were all like probably 20 yards at like 20 yard intervals mm-hmm. from each other. And I turn the corner and look up, and 90 yards from me, I see a grizzly bear mm. just like dead smack in the middle Good. of the road, oh, right Lord. around this blind corner. Um, just going 35 miles an hour straight at it. With a loaded bike. So I slam yeah. both brakes front and back. But since I am on a loaded bike on gravel, I slide probably like 10 feet still. For sure. And finally stop my bike. The bear hears me. How far are you from him now when you stop? I looked at the picture again. You have and a then, picture? Oh, you, I have a picture of it, yeah. Oh, a picture of the spot. I've never seen the picture. Because oh, I was like, this spot. is how close I was. <laughs> he goes, oh, shit. Bear, <laughs> stop. Bear. Pulls yeah, out. grab take the camera. Out, take out my camera. Out no, because I, I have a picture of the spot because I wanted to Google map it and right. figure out how close I was. And I was right around 40 yards from the bear wow Dang. like it was a so long you see scoop. it 90 yards and you don't stop for another 50 and now you're 40 yards yeah like it. it was a so it you was close half amount. the distance wow that's scary because i also had to react like react and pull the brakes but i so i stopped yeah so your reaction time is not good at all terrible yeah. no it's totally in another world <laughs> yeah and What's the grizzly that? bear's What's like staring back at me and i'm looking at it and it's like it was in the back of our minds the entire time we were in the back country of Montana that right. there are grizzly bears. Have bear mace or we all so we all had bear a spray. Gun? No mm, guns. No guns. Bear spray. Bear spray. More effective than guns, actually. Not if you're a good shot. I've been told. I'm a pretty good shot. Yeah. Should have been with us. Yeah. Should have been in the front. Yeah. On my handlebars. Yeah, with a rifle. <laughs> yeah, with a rifle at the ready. Yeah. Terrifying any I'm, car that drives by. Who's this guy with you? Oh, this is our security. Yeah, he's my friend. Yeah. Um, but we don't, so, mind, we don't mind the extra weight. On the <laughs> no, it's fine, especially on these downhills. We're counting ounces, you got to count a lot of ounces. <laughs> That's when Matt hit sixty. <laughs> <laughs> we were flying. Um, so you're forty yards from this bear, and you've come to a stop. You take out your phone, and take a picture. What's the next thing you can do? Uh, so I start backing up because I know Emily is <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> great the, instinct is yeah, ripping, yeah, yeah, ripping yeah, behind me. Yeah. I, like, yeah, I can't believe my instincts yeah. kicked in this well. <laughs> Genius, back up from the bear. And so the, actually, at this point, I, I got off my bike because the next thing you have to do is make sure in. that these people don't run into you behind you, right? You have to make sure right. Emily. And That's Connor, what I was scared about, right? Because not that they were going to run into me, that they were going to go past you into the path of the bear, right? So I get off my bike and start walking back. I watch the bear run into the left side of the woods. Mm, brush. And I'm walking back and I'm telling Emily, and I'm trying not to yell or like freak out. And I'm like motioning to Emily to slow down. And she's like getting closer. And she's like the smiliest person that I've ever met in my life. And she has this huge smile on her face. And she told me later, she thinks, she thought that I was making a joke. And joking about the bear. Oh, no. But I was like, slow down, slow down. There's a grizzly bear. And I was saying it in that tone. Right. Because I didn't want to, yeah, freak her out. What? So she's slowing down at this point? Or you're just like miming a bear to (laughs) her? Yeah, no. She thought I was just dancing in the middle of the road. (laughs) No, she wouldn't be out of character. Like a rain dance or something. (laughs) Finally, she slows down and like pulls up next to me and I tell her. And we do the same thing to Connor. He slows down. And. We're all like, what now? What do we do next? Because the bear ran into the left side. And we have to go down the road around this blind corner where it came out the right side is now on the left. So we're thinking it's going to come back over the road. Right. So we're standing there and like maybe five minutes goes by. How big do you think this bear? I mean, you're 40 yards from it. It was like as big as any black bear that I've seen right. out out here in Massachusetts. So I was like, oh, it's a, it's this is a fully grown Grizzly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Decent sized grizzly. De- it's a decent size. It's yeah. definitely not a cub. Yeah. Well, it comes back out and it's a, it's definitely a cub. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. So, Mamba. Yeah, we're all standing there with our bear spray and the cub comes back out, walks across the road, and we don't see the mom, but the bushes on the other side of the road, once the cub goes in, everything's moving. Oh, oh, the man. bushes, the trees, and it's like, that is. That's the mom over there and how many other cubs there are. And then we were thinking, like, if we didn't wait this whole time and we went down the road, 
we would have been directly in the middle of the mom. Yeah, cub. you would have been in between. Yeah. The and mom it would have, cub. like, there's no doubt in our minds that we would have been attacked right. or mauled. Yeah. Oh, my God. Looking at the left side, waiting to get picked off from there, and the mom comes out from, from the behind. right. Yeah, the, oh, the actual Lord. bear that we should have been worried oh, about. Oh, no. So that was terrifying. What? Definitely the craziest thing that's ever happened to me on a bike. Yeah, that's, that's nuts. And I our mean, adrenaline was so high. Like, not five minutes later, a car was driving up the road. And it's, like, the first car we've seen in a few days. Mm-hmm. So now the and three we're dri- you were doing the bear And dance. we're, like, <laughs> jacked up, cra- like, adrenaline's pumping in all of us, and the car pulls over to us, not because we're doing anything crazy, and rolls down their window, and they ask us, like, where this one location is. We tell them, and then we're like, also, there's a bear, like a grizzly bear, right up the road. These two people didn't give a shit. <laughs> there were like two older people and they're like, ah, okay, yeah, whatever. We we're, we're trying to go somewhere. Yeah. We got a party. Throw to get the to. window up and drive away. And yeah, they're probably <laughs> they go, good local luck in for- your not car. Yeah, yeah. we were just standing there <laughs> yeah. freaking out. They, they're probably local people from Montana and they probably see one every single yeah, day. They, that one they understand. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Um but yeah, that without a doubt the craziest thing that's happened to me on a bike. Yeah. I mean Nothing's ever crazy happened. Nothing that crazy has ever happened to me off a bike, and you were on a bike. Yeah, that, <laughs> I, I, going I almost forty, right out of mama bear and her cubs. Yeah, in first the time rush. I've seen a grizzly bear. Yeah, I had a grizzly bear walk through camp one time on a hiking trip, but yeah, with Footprints. all the kids. Yeah, with the kids. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a different be, kind of scenario because you're not really worried about yourself there. No, yeah, I woke up and saw the paw print yeah. right next to my tent huge paw print with the claws and everything and then i was leading with another woman and i told her and i like pointed it out and she she had the same me. reaction she just didn't care she like looked at me people. she's like you're such a you're <laughs> she got in the car with an older couple yeah. and just drove off yeah. <laughs> we're trying to get somewhere today no that's not but yeah she's like we just won't we're not going to tell the kids about this yeah and we agreed on that but yeah that's i walked crazy. straight through our camp all right Dang. as we were all sleeping yeah, that's a crazy story. I couldn't imagine. I mean, but you what did was it? tell what? me that uh, you guys never did find that one camper. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's yeah, let's go to the next topic. <laughs> Sarah Jane. Um, oh, what was I gonna say? Um, what do you? What What was the? Oh, those are really good. Yeah, thanks Dude, for this is yeah. We are drinking. Are we allowed to say this? We're drinking Heady Topper from uh, the Alchemist in Vermont. That <laughs> We're Matt, gonna have to bleep that, that out. That, 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 <laughs> that Matt picked up. Sponsors. Uh, that Matt picked up in, on his solo biking trip. So. Yeah, these are delicious, man. Thank you, Matt. Um, yeah. Still but Vermont. what I was gonna say. So, where was that in that, like in the sequence of that trip? Was that early on in the trip? Last day. It was a, oh damn. So we were like, in, could you the, imagine if the entire like, time we were freaking out because we're in the back country, right? Like away from see civilization. Going to see a bear. Definitely yeah, the entire time, and this is like the I'd say the first time all of us and like let down our guard. The easiest part of the trip, the last yep. part of the trip. Yeah, and that's, that's when it always happens. Oh, that's when it happens. Or are you guys still just like it's downhill? Like you guys are just enjoying it. Well, that's what or that like, was your leg the, shot. The, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh no, because at this point it's like. The last day, we re- we know we're gonna get some real food. Okay. We're gonna shower. Like we're pumped. Okay. Yeah. Like you're pretty. You're at the last day of these kind of trips. I'd say you're kind of over it. You're like exci- you're not over it, but you're excited to right get clean, clean every like get everything off your bike right, and be finished in a way. And in this particular situation, just because we know we're about to clean up and then do the same thing next week. Right. So, I was gonna say. I couldn't imagine. I mean, I guess you're in Montana. You're always thinking about we're going to see a bear. We're going to come across yeah. a bear. But I couldn't imagine if that happened like early on on the trip. Like what your mindset would be. Like I feel like oh, terrifying. I feel like I wouldn't want to bike on the side of the road. Right. I want to be in the bend, middle. Yeah. You know what I mean? In every bend, that'd be just like, is there a bear around the bend? Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to figure out how I was going to tell my mom because she was freaking out when we left for this trip. Right. And she was so nervous that something like that was going to happen it's a bear yeah, as we're talking two that squirrels would just book it out of the woods yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. i've got the headphones on so i'd even hear this kind of feels like in the back country here yeah i'm my feet are getting eaten alive by mosquitoes i guess i, I should have worn shoes but yeah. the jeans look good though hey thanks man i was told i had to wear them by zach yeah. even though this is a podcast where wear people nice can only hear us yeah. yeah everyone's gonna see I was you not allowed to wear shorts <laughs> in my own goddamn backyard um pants yeah oh but yeah so i was trying to figure out how i was going to tell my mom and then 
ultimately I just decided she follows me on the Strava app. So she knows that I like have survived each day. So I was like, I, I know she's following this religiously. Right. So in my description, I just wrote all about the grizzly encounter and had her read it on her own. <laughs> <laughs> like, didn't tell her at all. You didn't just even posted the approach ride. it with, oh my God. I had the picture of like where it happened and it could, you could see how close I was. I and I just like let her <laughs> unpack it by herself. End oh, it with the no. last sentence. Somebody get help. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to make. <laughs> um, that's, that's. Not good. I thought it was pretty that's smart. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't yeah, think that's right. Let a, let a few people know what's she going took on. Well. Yeah. I'm yeah. What sure. was her real? Did she call you like immediately? She texted me and she was like, <laughs> went on airplane mode for the next three weeks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no response. Oh no. She. I think she texted me and just said like bear question mark question mark. Right. So. And you were like, yeah. yes, there are bears out here. Yeah, and I saw one today, very close up. Yeah, that's crazy. That's a crazy story. Um, not near the. I mean. I don't know. They're they're two very crazy stories. Tell the other story where you guys were trying to get across the border into Canada. Were you trying to start your trip there or end the trip there? I forget. You trying to start in Canada? We were we had just biked in again Montana, but this time north, like pretty northeastern Montana. Right. And that was your first time going out west biking. Yeah, right? first time bike packing in general. Mm-hmm. And we at, at, like looking back on it, we had no idea what we were doing bikepacking wise, but it was still a blast. But we just like, and keep in mind, this is the second trip Matt's gone on with my sister. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wait, he's with your sister here. Yeah. Oh they, no, I'm trying to get to meet up with her, his sister, her boyfriend, and then her friend, like one of her best friends. Mm-hmm. So we're like texting them, like, yeah, we're gonna meet you guys at this place in Canada, and uh, oh, right, on this right, right, date. Right. Then we leave for our bike packing trip yeah. in Montana and we get back. But before we left, we, at this point, we still didn't know how we were going to get from Montana to Banff, Canada. Yeah. And little kids take notes on. Don't ha- do what I, don't do what I'm about to do. Do exactly you. what this young man did. It yeah. is the perfect way, way to get around. Yeah, best way to get around people. and meet very interesting <laughs> new people. This is when we were pinching pennies. This which we uh, which website did you use to uh, go about trying to find someone? Was super, it super super reliable website? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Everyone knows it. Craigslist. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Craig. And we took a picture from. Nothing ever weird happens on Craigslist, right? Dude, that's what the that's what everyone in Montana told us. All the locals <laughs> in Whitefish, Montana, said. Just post That's probably where the weirdest things happen on Craigslist <laughs> is in Whitefish, Montana. All, we were also what, they're all on Craigslist. Uh, yeah. Actually, the person who told <laughs> the us to post town. on White, the, the person who told us to post on Craigslist was the guy that we were staying with, and he had an Airbnb in his name. His legal name was Life Everlasting Noel. <laughs> Great guy. And you guys go, best advice I've ever gotten. Yeah. And he had yeah. the cheapest house in Whitefish, Montana on Airbnb. Great dude. Really awesome dude, great house. Not the best advice for yeah, how to get maybe, to Canada. Maybe not the best confidant when it comes to trying to cross the border. And I'd say it all probably it, started with it, our post too. Our post on Craigslist right. wasn't great. You guys, did, I don't know. The whole situation it does make it seem like you guys are like, I guess get into it. But it like from the outside perspective, the way you're talking about getting across the border does make it seem like you are trying to do something illegal when you're not. You're no, just trying, no. It was literally, yeah. You it can't, sounds. You can't bad, cross them on your bikes, right? Are you allowed to cross them on bikes? You can cross on your bike yeah. <laughs> if you're fast enough. But we didn't okay. have that. Was then this is the first thing we learned. We had rented bikes in Montana, and we were going to rent bikes in Canada. Okay. Uh, we didn't ship our bikes out there. There you go. Which we also learned was not the way to do it. Yeah. So how far are you guys from Banff then? Um, like 200 miles, I think. Whitefish okay. is 200 miles from Banff? Yeah, that it might be. Totally. So what, like four to six hours? Yeah, like it's that. like a long drive. All our viewers like in Whitefish, drive. Montana are going, these guys are idiots. Yeah. <laughs> it's so much closer than that. <laughs> go, these guys aren't even on Craigslist? Yeah. <laughs> They have no idea what they're doing. They're talking about us on Craigslist all right, right so now. so you guys post on Craigslist. What's your post like? And that's where I think it all starts, because we find a picture of the two of us from our last trip together. You posted a picture with the message? In Peru, yeah, because that's what this guy told us to do. He's like, you need to post a picture of yourselves to make sure you're reliable. <laughs> because you need to <laughs> make sure you're good looking so, so that people want Well, that's what ultimately we learned. We post a picture <laughs> of the two of us. Shirts off. In yeah. Peru, yeah. just like... 
super hungover and <laughs> look terrible. So we're just like, oh, people are going to know that we're cool guys. Yeah. <laughs> Connor's throwing up in the back. <laughs> yeah, we disheveled. And we post a picture, and our caption was something along the lines of two dudes, three bags, because we had all of our gear with us. We were like, two <laughs> the dudes. Other, the other two were talking about their sacks. <laughs> three dudes, two, oh, no, two dudes, three bags, trying to get from Whitefish to Banff. Some, then the next sentence, we were, wow, pretty, I forget. Were you trying to throw some flair in there or something? We were something? like pretty trying loopy to... when we were posting this, I think just like. <laughs> just as hungover as in the picture. Yeah, and yeah. we were like, yeah. <laughs> looking for a ride, sometimes we, I remember typing this out specifically, oh, no. I was like, sometimes we fart in the car. And put up the windows <laughs> and refused to get any other air in there. That's what did it, dude. But, yeah, and then we were what... like, dot, 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 but we'll pay you it with for gas money and a snack. Oh, no. And that was our post, and we oh, put it out. No. <laughs> oh, dude, this is, this is all. Do you have a picture of this? Like, crazy yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely have it. All right, shoot us to that. Yeah. I want to I wanna, like, uh, put up like show notes and stuff, so I'd love yeah, to. The, yeah, that's a good the, idea. The actual post, I screenshotted it after. And it's like exactly what I just said, probably even worse. Oh, no. <laughs> and it's with the picture, too. So you'll see the picture I used. <laughs> okay. Um, and I put it up. And we get back, and we, we're leaving the next day after our bike trip now. Did you write the poster? Did you guys write it in tandem? Did I any, just ripped it out one day. Connor, yeah. didn't, Connor <laughs> yeah, didn't peer yeah, review it. No, yeah, Connor yeah, he was in it and goes, what yeah. do you do? Yeah, he was like <laughs> listening in as I was like typing it out loud. And then I just posted it, and he was like, what? What are you saying over there? <laughs> At this point, he also like knows to listen to ten percent of what I said. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so I post it, and we get back five days later, and we're back in service in Whitefish, and I was like, "Oh, nice, dude. We got it. We got three responses." <laughs> Wait, how? Um, how? When were you supposed to leave? When you got back, when were you supposed to leave to go to BAM? The next morning. <laughs> so you oh. guys, you guys post on Craigslist, go off the grid for, leave five, for five days, days. no <laughs> service whatsoever, and then come yeah. back and just assume, yeah, we'll have a ride to get to BAM <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> that's exactly how it worked. Oh my god! Actually, yeah, no, that's we had a lot of faith, and then we get back and i open open up my phone and i have three responses mm -hmm. and i was like oh dude we're in we have three different people wanting to drive us to banff right <laughs> i open up the first response one of them's <laughs> got to be normal well yeah you would think yeah. out of the three uh, or were you guys not even thinking about this i feel like you guys didn't even i dude, feel like it didn't even come into the realm of possibility didn't for you even guys cross that maybe on craigslist posting a weird message like this we're not going to get like the best people to answer <laughs> did not even cross my mind yeah honestly. yeah I, it's insane it's insane Open up the fir This is the first time I realized that our post probably wasn't great. Because I open up the first message. It's got to be, it's week, gotta be just, sexual. Had a week to sit on it. It's got, and, the, yeah, the, the first post has to be sexual. Yeah, I mean, Sesh I guess we looked all right. Szechuan sauce. <laughs> oh, no. So the first, the first response I get is a guy and he responds and he's like, happy to take you two to Whitefish. Don't need, you don't need to pay me in gas money. Just let me blow both of you. <laughs> and I was like, ah, the first, the first response didn't work <laughs> out, Connor. You go, does that mean we still have to get you a snack? <laughs> <laughs> what about my snacks? Connor, he, he didn't want to take us across the border, just to the border. Yeah, no, the next guy. first response, not, not great. Yeah. Second one was some kind of like robot auto message. All right. All right. So we get we get the th I get to the third response, right? And it's this guy, and he just it's a super normal response, uh, right. normal response, and he's like, "Happy to take you guys over to Banff. Make this drive all the time. It's beautiful. I haven't done it in years, but I really enjoy that drive. Like, here's my number. Text me or call me, and let's talk specifics." So I tell Connor, I'm like, "Yo, we're in. This guy, he is willing to take us. Let's go." Let's go into town and grab beers, and I'll call him. <laughs> Does Connor also know the other two responses? Yeah, does does he know, know that, that this is your yeah. only shot? This is our yeah. only shot. At this point, yeah. he does know that. Yeah, it's not so, like you had a wealth of uh, people to choose from. <laughs> no, no, no. Because you could have taken the first option. I don't know. It, it sounded fine to me. Yeah, to the border. Yeah. He could have just blown Connor. It would have been good. <laughs> Figure it out. Take from you to the border, then I'll blow you, <laughs> and then I'll take your car. Because the border. I said both of you. <laughs> One God. to the border, one to Ben. <laughs> <laughs> and I want a Twinkie. <laughs> yeah, I'd want that snack. Don't forget about that snack. <laughs> but I, don't, I also don't know how, how in detail I should go with this. This is a long story. 
it's it's a pretty good long story. So, all right. So, just start it from when you get in the car with him. No, because, right. well, he starts... He, you start getting some weird vibes right before that, right? Yeah, so... Oh, did he I'll like, start. I'll start from when we first meet him. Where then right. it's the next morning, and we figured out all the logistics. It, it 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 went perfectly normal, just as you would talk with anyone else who you met on Craigslist. <laughs> perfectly normal. Yeah. So we're waiting at this coffee shop. No red shop. flags came up and at all. No, no, actually, no red flags. Right. And we decided we're going to meet at this coffee shop at seven in the morning to start the drive. Mm-hmm. So we get there. We're just hanging out. It's just. It's just the two of us at this point. And he's driving, I think he said, like half an hour, 45 minutes. He had a drive from his place. And we're drinking coffee, eating breakfast. Seven o'clock rolls around, eight o'clock rolls around. And then finally, I shoot him a text and I was like, hey, do you, like, pretty much like, where are you? Right. Do you need any help finding us? Mm-hmm. And shows up, doesn't answer the text, but shows up an hour later at nine. And he was supposed to grab you at seven? And he's supposed to grab us at seven. Okay. And he pulls so up. So he's not getting that snack. <laughs> that's part of it. Yeah, that's that's part of it. No, no, that is part of it. Because we said, <laughs> we'll buy you snacks. Snack in yeah. front of him. <laughs> you guys <laughs> listening will see my post. And we specifically said, we'll buy you snacks. So we weren't going to go back on that just yet. Um, <laughs> and he pulls up in this beat down pickup truck. Like it is, it's trashed. But pulls up, it's a working car. And the first thing he says is, I forgot my license, my ID, and my passport. <laughs> to go across uh, the Canadian border. And we're border. already two hours behind oh, schedule. No. Like, we're already two hours late. Oh, no. So we're like, all right, just go. But at the same time, he's our only option. Mm. So we're like, all right, can you go grab it and come back and pick us up? And he's what like, is- yeah, oh, yeah, 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 sure, yeah. Come on, you guys come with. It's 45 minutes <laughs> and then 45 minutes back. And we're like, no, nah, we're fine. Like, we'll just chill here. Which we were going to do. Mm -hmm. So he leaves. Which, why does he drive out there to tell you that? That's that's also what we were wondering. Like, there's definitely service closer. At what point did he realize he forgot all those things? I guess as soon as he stepped out of the car. Or maybe he had a secret plan to bring you guys back. (laughs) This guy (laughs) thinks he's crushing it, goes to pull up to you guys, opens the door, gets out of the car, goes, oh, oh, oh. (laughs) Two hours late. Everything. Oh, Oh, four hours late. Oh, my God, I forgot everything. God does not know how to do the pocket check, phone, wallet, keys. No, no, he's all over the place. So jump ahead. It's now 11. So it was like two hours round trip Mm -hmm. for him to drive back, come over. It's 11 o'clock. We're jacked up on caffeine at this point. I'm getting, I'm a little pissed because yeah, I'm like, getting antsy. Pissed. I don't want to. Yeah, we could have been in Banff by now. Right. It feels like, and he comes back. Oh, we also at this point because we saw the car that he was driving, we flip a coin for who's gonna have to sit in the middle of the two. Oh, it's a bench seat in a truck. That's it. Oh, well, like a pickup. Straight across the front. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's gonna no. be him driving, someone in the middle, and someone in the passenger seat. <laughs> you guys already know it's gonna suck. <laughs> yeah. So we flip a coin. I lose. This isn't the guy who wanted to get blown. <laughs> no, and this is this is this is our most reliable Craigslist contact. Should have gone with the robot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I lose. I know I'm gonna be in the middle. He shows back up. We throw all of our bags in the back of his truck, and we hop in, and I'm sitting in the front. And I definitely, Connor is much more patient than I am, and I'm, like, kind of getting towards the end of my patience with this guy already. And we sit down. We're about to pull out, and he goes, oh, wait, you guys mentioned something about snacks, right? <laughs> He's like, do you guys mind buying me a milkshake what time is inside? That? What time is this? It's at 11. <laughs> <laughs> it's 11 o'clock Four hours. and I have caffeine coursing through my veins right. and he mentions milkshake. He like wants us to go inside and buy him a milkshake. And I was like, yo, you're four hours late. There's no way we're buying you snacks for the rest of this trip. Right. <laughs> like I was no just, I was, I was, I was fed up no and I was like, there's not a chance. Yeah. He's like, really? He was like surprised that I was saying this. That's like, I don't care about the money. I wanted the snack. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, there's no, there's no way we're buying you a milkshake. And he's like, all right, well, and then he gets out and buys himself a milkshake. Yeah, because he needs the milkshake. He needs it, I guess. Yeah. Comes back in, and we're off. Finally, eleven o'clock. We're Let's driving Bamf. towards the border. Bamped. Here we come. And it's like two hours to the border, and I think it's two hours on the opposite side into Canada. I'm sorry. I think I missed who draw the short stick for sitting in the middle. That'd be me. Nah, that would be you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that would be me. Great. Great. 
which wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Mm, yeah. Um, this guy holds the conversation the conversation the entire time, and he's telling us about his poker and gambling days right. and whitefish and all this other stuff. And I can pretty much like close my eyes and have <laughs> yeah. this guy talk the entire so time. I holds the conversation. <laughs> you, mean you mean this guy's rambles. talking out loud? Yeah. <laughs> rambling no, on and on and no, on. <laughs> you're he has no, to sleep. he has no questions about the two random kids trying to get across the border. Yeah, no. Or... no, he just got his milkshake. Oh, he's yeah. good to go. Yeah. Yeah. My, he's, he's my bad. Solid. That would be too. So he's talking the entire time up there. Right. We both check out. Is he any good at gambling and? Uh, it sounded like he was he winning money. He must have not have been because he, he needed this money. <laughs> yeah, well, he, he might have needed this money for a few things, uh, but no. he's talking the entire time. And then we start approaching the border, and we're maybe like 10, 15 minutes out, and this guy's talking has come to a standstill. He's not saying a word, and I'm like, I'm wondering a little bit what's going on. Right, yeah, little weird vibes going on. Yeah, it's on. definitely a little bit. And then we get closer and closer to the border. And now we can see the border, and he is freaking out. Hmm. He's asking us, like, how fast he should be driving. If we have our seatbelts on, he's like, should I put my seatbelt on? He didn't have his seatbelt <laughs> on the whole time? No, no. no. And he's, like, searching for his seatbelt, driving, like, 15 miles per hour oh, up to the border. God. And he's just like, we can tell there's something wrong here. Yeah. And we pull up to the border agent, and the first thing this guy says, rolls down his window looks at the border agent, and he goes, I don't know either of these guys. They found me on Craigslist and asked me to drive them across the border. <laughs> and the, me and Connor and the border agent's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what is okay? He goes, you're from White Meadows or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> and the border, the, the border agent was just like, uh, all right, just give me all your passports. <laughs> so we hand over our passports, and I didn't say anything to him at that point. But we're just like, what oh, the hell? Yeah. yeah. What the God. hell are you doing? Yeah. Then, big surprise, the border agent comes back and he's like, Yeah, hey, yeah, just pull over here. Right. You guys uh, You guys cannot go through. He's like, You've yet. been chosen for a random inspection. <laughs> yeah, very random. And we're like, Yeah, the figures that we've been chosen. Yeah. So we pull over to kind of like a little bit more of an intense spot too. It's not just like where they'll search your car like on the outside. Okay. And Definitely, like, the most intense border Like, it's not patrol. where they're, like, whatever. No, it's like, family a, cars it's like a place whatever. that you're pulling over to and you're getting out of your car. Right. Okay. And we all hop out of our car, and they have this, like, silver table. And they're, like, empty all your pockets, take off your hat, like, empty it all on this table. Right. <laughs> Didn't you say the guy? And at the same time... So, at the same time... Wait, what? <laughs> Didn't you say the guy goes, every time... <laughs> oh yeah, that was the best part. He's like, he's like, you have to pull over here. You have uh, been randomly inspected, and the guy who's driving us looks at us and he goes, "Every time." <laughs> and I was just like, "No, this is this is going down." Maybe now. when you, oh yeah, when you start a off an interaction yeah. the way you just did, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> these guys. Sense. Yeah, right. yeah. So, uh, yeah. So we start. We pull everything out of our pockets. <laughs> what do you think is going through the? <laughs> The border patrol's head. <laughs> like, I these like two idiots. I want to see. Oh, we told them that we had to show them the Craigslist post. Mm -hmm. That comes later on, but right. That was pretty embarrassing. No, but like when when the driver just immediately, no questions asked. The first thing he says is just, "I don't know these guys. I, I found them on like." Maybe that's how he starts every conversation. He just went in to go get a milkshake and goes, "By the way, I don't know those two guys in the yeah. car. I just found them on Craigslist." Because <laughs> all right, here's like, your fucking like, vanilla right, milkshake. milkshake. Would you just relax, dude? But. We're emptying our pockets, and we throw so everything out awkward. on the table. And then we watch our, the person who's, who's been driving us, and he pulls out this vial that's, like, obviously some kind of medicine. It's a medical vial, and it's filled with pink liquid. And he pulls it out, throws it on the table, and the border agent, like, hones in on it immediately. He yeah. knows exactly what it is, and he's like – he looks at the driver, and he's like, so – and we're all standing there. Right. And he's like, so when's the last time that you've used – and the, dry, the guy I was like, I did no, no, he's, he's, and he's like immediately, he's like, no, no, I don't, he's like, I don't shoot heroin, uh, this is for back pain, this is methadone for back pain that I have. And then at this point, I like look over at Connor, and I was just like, dude, this is fucked, like, Pick the wrong we're not, guy. we're not leaving. Yeah. And the guy picks it up, picks up the vial, and he's looking at it, and he's like, what did you say your name was again? 
And the driver answers, and he's like, huh. Usually when you have method, methadone, it's under your name. <laughs> and that's the last we saw the driver. Yep. The guy, he obviously has like some, I don't even know what it is, some kind of pain medication on him that's not his. Mm-hmm. And they pull him inside, never see him again, and they're just like, yeah, you two go sit over there on the curb. Right. We're going to search the car. Right. And Well, I guess at this point you guys are probably thinking like, thank you for saying you didn't know who we were and yeah, you don't no, know us. Yeah, no, that's actually, it was like, oh, maybe he was Saving looking Saving grace. Like, yeah. right. He knew he was going to get stopped. Right. And he knew he had... But also, like, why would you even try? Yeah, you know you're going to cross the border. And I guess it's because of he, he got to keep the money in the end that we paid him. But um, he goes inside. We don't see him again. And they start ripping apart the car. Right. And obviously they find, like, needles. And at one point he, like, opens up a tin, like, this piece of tin foil, right. And he's like, go grab the test kit. Like, this is Full heroin. Like, actually episode. ripping it up, like, knives and, like, Like, opening, seats. like, ripping the seats yeah. forward. Full-fledged. Dang cops episode yeah and we're sitting there and we're just like what we're never gonna get to Banff now yeah we're never leaving this spot ever no it was bad and they're like pulling out license plate turns out the car was stolen (laughs) (laughs) like everything that could have gone wrong (laughs) is going wrong the story would have been so great just like the weird driver but the fact that like he's trying to bring drugs across the border (laughs) The car, the car that he's stolen. driving you in is stolen, and he's got <laughs> multiple license top, plates. It's he comes just like four hours late, and on top of that, yeah. Well, he needs a milkshake. Like, dude, maybe yeah, don't forget a milkshake. Like, may, I, I guess he didn't have any ill intentions towards you guys, because why would he try to cross the border? He would have done so before then. But like yeah. at that point, I'd be thinking, like, what was going to happen to us? Like, yeah, this guy's right. driving a stolen car. He's an addict. Yeah, and and that's that's really I think what it came down to is like right. I didn't even mention this, but he demanded that we pay him the cash before, the before we got to the border. Right. Because I That's went. there was like a full back and forth that I forgot to mention where I was like, can we pay you half now and then half when we get to our location? Right. Mm-hmm. And Which he seemed at this totally point like a, like a reasonable guy. Yeah. Right. It was, he was super normal except for being four hours late. And he was like, no, like just pay me. I don't want you guys to screw me. Like get to the border in peace. Which I get that side of it. I too. totally got it. But like, what are, you, what are you guys going to jump and roll from the car? Like, you're sitting yeah, next I don't to know. him. I don't know. I don't know. I, I guess like got I get, his I get point the half and to half like deal. make him feel a little. The half and half yeah. sounds fine. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'm also sitting right next to him in this car, and I right. don't know this guy, and he's like getting pretty demanding about me paying him for a job that he's doing. So right. I was like, all right, here's the money. And you're just trying to close your eyes. <laughs> Take it. Yeah. I don't, I don't care about your gambling days. <laughs> right. Um, so that was the other thing. He, he was definitely just doing it for the money. Right. Which he ultimately got to keep. So as as Matt is the first time Matt told me the story, we're at we're at our friend's house oh, and we're this... and we're all chilling and he's telling the story and he's like right at the part like where they get to the border and like he pulls out the vial. And also none of you believe me. Yeah. Well, it's a ridiculous it's story. A ri- it's a ridiculous story. So like we're all just sitting there like what like I believed you, but like it was just like how is much of this exaggerating? is exaggerating? Yeah. Like, come on! Like, this just sounds crazy. And at that moment, like, we won't say the guy's name, but he told us the name. And at that moment, Matt's phone is sitting like on the table where everyone else's phones is, and the phone lights up, and the name just comes across it. <laughs> this and guy's it, name, dude. And at that point, I was like, "Is Matt staging the story? Is this like a performance act where like he was going to have someone call to like back him up?" Right. But it couldn't have been Connor's on the other side. He's yeah, exactly. Connor's like trying to help him out. But no, this guy calls him because I put it on speaker. Tell- yeah, as he's telling the story, and I put it on speaker. What are the chances? That's wild. What yeah. are the chances? Yeah, and he like tried to tell me exactly what happened. Yeah, he tried to tell him like the whole backstory. Because I also, te- I think he was he was following up because I texted him right after, right. and I was like, "Thanks for stealing." We paid him two hundred dollars to drive us, right? And I was like, "Thanks for robbing us of two hundred dollars." Something along <laughs> the lines of like. <laughs> Hope you're in jail or something like that. <laughs> like I was pissed. Along the lines, yeah. that's yeah. the exact quote. Yeah, yeah no, I was pissed because it was something we didn't have. We didn't have a lot of money for this trip, right. and we just wasted two hundred dollars. Yeah, amount of money, mm. and we're about to spend a lot more on travel up to Banff. But mm. right, yeah, but he he calls and like we're all sitting, and we're like, what? What the hell? And then Matt starts like giving it to him, and he's like, what? What are you? What happened, man? Like, thanks a lot. Like, you just. You totally two, screwed us on you guys yeah. left us and yeah and he was like no dude like you screwed me like they were looking for you guys <laughs> remember <laughs> oh, oh, that, he like oh tried God. to spin it yeah, on him like, no, yeah. no no it was the two of you that they were looking for yeah. not me did, yeah, well, did, they, 
<laughs> Did you call him out on his intro line to the Border Patrol officer? <laughs> no, he didn't. I didn't call him out on that, but I was like, what are you talking about? And then he went into how he was bragging about the money he was going to make. Uh, at his off, poker game. Off of this drive mm-hmm. at a poker game. And someone called the Border Patrol and was like, this guy is taking these two guys across, across the, border. the border. And they knew, obviously, he was going to have drugs on him. Right. Yeah. And that was the reason he gave, which is like, maybe that did happen because right. he was bragging about the money. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, and this so person t- wanted to drive you instead of me. It's just so tough. To, <laughs> the guy who's going to suck you off? <laughs> yeah, yeah, could <laughs> That's you, the guy who's playing poker. Could you imagine? imagine? Could you imagine? Like, That's what we thought, too, when he was telling us. that. Yeah, so when you got, after this man gets taken away and his car gets stripped and everything, you're free to go. Well, right? we, did, we didn't know that. You didn't know that. We're still just sitting there, but they've totally forgotten about us. Right. Because they're pulling out more and more illegal things from this guy's right. car. Well, not even his car. Yeah, from this, this illegally this, stolen this car. stolen car. Right. <laughs> now he can just go, that's not my car. Yeah. No, yeah. Nothing in there is mine. All right. So when, when they got to you, what did they say to you guys? Like, what happened? So they didn't even say anything to us. And then finally, I had to go to the bathroom. So I walked into, and I'm also still kind of like pissed that we lost $200. Yeah. So I walked inside and I was like, hey, is there anywhere I can go to the bathroom also? I know that that, uh, that, that guy is like probably not going to be the one driving us. Um, but is there any way we can get the money back that we, that we paid him to drive us? Right, because they have all of his possessions. And he saw that too. Like he em- when he emptied his pockets, the $200 came out. Right. So they, and they asked us about it. And I was like, oh, that's what I paid him to drive us to Banff. They know the whole story. Right. And... The border patrol agent looks at me and he was like, no, that guy's dealing with a lot more serious crimes than petty theft, right. which is like what they were going to classify the $200 being like wrongly right, right, right. handed over to him. But he's like, that guy's dealing with a lot of problems. And he's like, also, there's no way that he's going across the border. There's no way that that car is getting across the border. So you two have to figure out another way to leave here. <laughs> and we're just like, all right, well, yeah. do you have any suggestions? Right. He's well, like, what well, should you- our Cra- Craigslist post say this time? Yeah. <laughs> like, Lose the picture and don't talk about farting with the windows <laughs> yeah. up. But keep the snacks. Dude, I yeah. honestly pulled it. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait until you guys see this post because I'm not kidding about the farts and the windows up. It's so funny. I know you're not. Yeah. <laughs> but he, so this guy's like, go. 100 yards that way, stand right on the other side of that cone, and this is at the border. He's like, stand on the other side of that cone. and I'm going to pull my gun out and, <laughs> yeah. see how and, and you I'm run. And do some target practice. <laughs> yeah. And start looking, like, start thumbing for a ride, pretty much is what he said. He told no you guys to hitchhike. Either. He told you guys to hitchhike. He told us to hitchhike. Wow. The closest town on either side. On the, the U.S. side, it's 20 miles, and on the Canada side, the Canadian side, it's 40. This guy told you guys to Jeez. hitchhike after you just went online <laughs> hitchhiking. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. do it in person. Yeah. See how it works yeah. out. It might be a little better. That's crazy. So did you guys make it to Banff? We made it. We didn't make it to Banff that day, but we made it to the next town over, mm-hmm. which is Fernie. Right. Which is also, it's a beautiful town. It's mm-hmm. like this beautiful mountain town in Canada um, that... A really nice guy who ended up get like an hour into us hitchhiking, stopped, pulled his car over. He was from the U.S., had a son our age that they, they like hiked around all the time. On the That's AT. what they always say. He's like, it's it was it's a godsend when people pick us up on the AT and drive us places. So yeah. I can drive you guys as far as Fernie. Nice. And then we spent the night in Fernie. Watched uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Great in movie. movie theater. In a movie theater. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is, Just this you is, and the dad. This is pre corona Yeah, me and the, the guy who hitchhiked. Or the guy who picked I miss up. movie theaters. The son stay in the car. Yeah. Um, but yeah, spent the night there and then ultimately got a, a ride in like this taxi service that we had to hire. But you okay. did make it to Banff. Yeah. Made it to, made it to Banff. Okay. Zach's sister. Zach's sister was waiting there, 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 there for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And boy, did we have <laughs> the best story upon our entrance into Banff. Yeah. How could you not? Yeah. Yeah, that must have been very cool. Oh my god, man! Yeah, that story is that's a crazy. That story. is wild. That's yeah. an all timer. Yeah, yeah, that's like absolutely. one of my favorite yeah. stories. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad he pressed for that comment yeah. because I love that one. Man. That's a good story. Um, I think I think we would be, um, disingenuous if we didn't talk about how 
you got into the whole outdoors life because that wasn't your vision at first, right? That, yeah. Not what you set out to do. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to go back because you used to just be like gung ho on like army stuff, like, right? Yeah. ROTC, you see, like, Penn when State. You're younger. So maybe even before that, because you you were just like a really energetic kid. Right. Growing up, right? Yeah, you I just think it's like, called. I think the uh, the actual term is just ADD. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's what you, if that's what you're yeah. getting at, yes, Un, I, undiagnosed I'm, ADD. I have a lot of energy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, so where, as a kid, did you like, or when did you like figure out how to channel that? Because essentially, it's just like you're always causing. What are you, trouble what are you like, trying to make me out to be no, over you're, here? you're always causing cl- trouble in class and stuff like yeah. that and like just like because you just like ccd just, yeah yeah and i think that's i mean i was definitely I'm pretty sure i was your lawyer in ccd at one point and yeah i did i got I, hire, I did hire you as my lawyer yeah, got you out of trouble for drinking water <laughs> or eating we had like or a something. substitute teacher in ccd which like what how does it's once a week yeah, you, you're and you're gonna not expect matt to freak out yeah on you? and so matt, matt what, was like, it not holy water <laughs> matt freaks out like we were going to visit like the office like we were in like what fourth grade we're going to visit the office and matt's crazy in class no matter what now there's a sub in ccd like he's he was, like eating he's going to, at one point i remember that yeah he's going to have a heyday at this and so like we're in this guy was looking for anything to get matt on and matt's in like the office of the ccd and he like doesn't ask anybody and just gets a cup of water and pours it from like the the water tap yeah, that's there water mm-hmm. jug right there yeah was, he was just was getting parched. water and the guy like freaked out on him and like i was like i'm gonna represent him and like made a whole case about <laughs> it awesome. but yeah it was ridiculous that's but that's how we spent the, the entire hour yeah that's how we spent the whole ccd we didn't learn about jesus or anything we just yeah. talked about Look matt grabbing now. water but that's how you were in every class. That, yeah, that's just, just like pushing the limits. Pushing. The, I think my fit the favorite, and my mom. That was the other thing. My mom like knew I was crazy, and she would reprimand me to a point. But also, she was like, "I, I know that you need to get your energy out and like right. have fun, pretty much." But I, the one time where I saw my mom smile was. Or like where she was like almost happy that I was getting in trouble. <laughs> two two instances. One where our neighbor came home and told my mom that she saw me in school that day. And my mom was explaining the story to me. And she's like, yeah, Mrs. Talbot walked into the office and she said you were lounging on the couch. <laughs> like you're just like, it, this is a normal everyday thing for you <laughs> that you're going to get sent down to the office. <laughs> and I could see her like kind of smirking. But the best time was when I brought home a detention slip from fourth grade miss amandola's class and on the reason for like departure to the office that was the title that they had to fill in and the reason for the departure to be sent down to the office was miss amandola had to regain control of the class (laughs) and my mom i like handed i handed that piece of paper (laughs) to my mom and she was like I could tell she was a little proud. <laughs> She's like, all right. Dude, at one point, he was in control of the whole entire yeah. class. <laughs> this kid's fucking grade. like 12. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just taking control so of way the class. too much energy. Right. So you had to put that energy somewhere, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And I also, I think I just had, because of how I was as a kid, I also then had a, I had a lot more patience for kids when I would be working with them. Right. That's true. Yeah. And that, like, started pretty early on, like, volunteering for different types of things for, like, NHS. Right. Well, you would go to... To you were that going vacation to, Bible school I went to. That I, wasn't... A, it wasn't associated with, like, our church at all, but it got me out of the... Everyone in our neighborhood did it. <laughs> right. This makes me think of one, one more story when we're in middle school, and Matt is just stirring things up, the, the entire eighth grade or whatever. The, the whole eighth grade, every day, he's killing at least 15, first 15 minutes of class. It's a done deal, yeah. him and this other kid. Yep. And we go on a uh, one of those trips to, like, I don't know, like Basto, like somewhere in random New Jersey oh, that no, you go right, on right. this Something spell historic. trip. Yeah, yeah. And so it's not our teachers leading it, but, like, whoever works at this area. Oh, and no. there's this <laughs> guy. bad news. Who, they don't know Matt Duncan's No, they don't know. It's, trip. dude, and it's, like, it's not school, so you can't really get in trouble. Like, <laughs> right. yeah. And so we're on this hiking trail, and this 
poor freaking guy, man. And <laughs> this this dude is probably like, if I think about it, maybe late twenties. Yeah, right. now he's probably right ar- like right around our age, a little older. Right. And Matt and Luke back like, then this he guy's was like our age. Whole no. trip yeah. with yeah. our class, just a living hell. I mean, they're running all off in the woods. Oh, they're coming back. Like, well, this other kid, Luke, is like. He matches my energy level. It's, they, it's and synergy. Just like, it's, right. They yeah, feed yeah, off yeah, each yeah, they feed other. Off each it's other. definitely, feed yeah, off it goes hand in hand. The and chaos. Dude, this, like, this guy from the get-go had no control over anything. He had it, no they chance. were just running the show yeah. and just like anything went. So fast forward a couple months and, uh, and we're in know. English class. Oh. And our teacher's not there. And we have a substitute teacher. And who walks in the door than this no freaking guy way. leading the trail? No it was the way. ranger. There he looks in the back of the class <laughs> and Matt. sees Matt and Luke. Dude, oh, and this them. guy is just like, he just knows it's over. Uh, they he already like, own He goes that. like ghost white. Yeah. Dude, it was just, it was a done deal. And so what? How, what was the time lapse in between the it two? Was, I think it was just a couple of months. Because it was oh, within okay. that yeah, same yeah, yeah, like yeah, year yeah, of yeah, school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was within a couple of months. <laughs> totally forgot he about just that. Got o- he and just got over the uh, the field trip. He was just... So a couple of months <laughs> later, though, we, somebody, one of us, shows us this newspaper clip and turns out the guy was like a sex offender. No. Or something. Yeah. yeah, no, he was, that's exactly what yeah. happened. Oh, like he was like creeping on him or something. Uh, Dude, and it, it, it was, was like just like... It was full on him like mugshot and everything so. yeah oh, like in God. in the local right, well, paper good for you then yeah. exactly so yeah. then we knew, like, we knew that there was yeah. something you up with tell. this guy yeah. he was a weird guy he yeah. could have easily just been some weird yeah. trail guy and then oh, dude, the craziest was like, part no. was this is the guy that drove me to the border <laughs> I just didn't think anything of it. Goes, I know this guy. Great guy. <laughs> yeah, great guy. He's super reliable. Great guy. Knows oh the wilderness God, super dude. well yeah. when he's taking kids back there. Yeah, he's creeping or something like yeah. that. Um, no, that's just... like, I, uh, I think it started back to like how I got into ultimately what I'm doing now because I was like how I would harness all my energy that I had was like doing every single sport that I could try, like all these crazy things, especially in my neighborhood. I was in a neighborhood with really athletic kind of adventurous kids Mm -hmm. all around my age. So we do like triathlons in our neighborhood, like anything that could just like get our energy out somehow. Right. And then I got into, I remember in like eighth grade, I read Lone Survivor, that book. And I was like, that's it. I want to be a Navy SEAL. Like I want to be Marcus Luttrell. I want to do all this. Got really into the military ROTC, Penn State. Yep. Ultimately applied for ROTC at college, got in, started doing that. And then it was my my sophomore year. I went abroad. At State. At Penn State, which yep. is like unheard of to do while you're in an ROTC program. Was it junior? Was it junior spring? Is that when everyone? Okay, so junior year. But so typically already, ROTC kids don't go abroad. Yeah, no. Like that's Because they're there of. training. Right. Yeah, and you have classes and all these like in-person trainings every Thursday. But I like read the fine print kind of, and I was like, "Oh, this is a thing I can do." Right. Also, like all my friends were going abroad. Yeah, take advantage outside of, of ROTC, and I was like, "Fuck that!" If I'm not going to go, right, and have a blast there. Right. And, and you, you were on a full ride from Penn State at that point too, right? For yeah, ROTC. through ROTC. Yeah, mm-hmm. fantastic. So I ultimately I applied to go abroad and. Instead of like going with everyone from Penn State, just like being picked up and moved. Abroad, did you get to pick where you? I wanted? did a completely random program. So I I I don't know anything about going abroad. Do you get to pick? Or like there's satellite you schools. Yeah. You, and get you get to pick. And you get Some free. kids just go to. But you don't have to like. A, you don't have to apply for a certain satellite school. If you get the if you get the abroad status, you get to pick anywhere. You, you can, and you can do one of the like approved ones through that school, right. or uh, if the school has it, you can the. And I think it's the best way to do it is just taking online classes through your school while you're in another country. Uh, yeah. And that's that's, that's really cool. how you do it because yeah. it's did cheaper. No, but I knew a I couple kids who did it. And by the time I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh, my God, that's genius. Right. It's yeah, thousands it's of dollars less, cheaper. Less and time. It's, assuming, yeah, probably, it's less time. So you can really just because like enjoy, you know, because you knock out. It's like the the bullshit classes, like right. the gen eds yeah, and stuff like that. Right, right, right. So right. but it's like you just take it through your school. You don't have to worry about fixing the transfers and stuff because it's already right. in there. You just do it online and then you just 
right where whereas if that. it wasn't online you would have to in person do something with and the you're transfer probably limited more to the cities because you have to go to those particular schools and right, stuff. right 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 that's cool yeah so you got a pretty awesome place that you picked yeah so i didn't want to go to like there are like programs that like all penn state kids go to or like all business kids I feel like you're taking shots here but uh <laughs> but you but yes yeah. ladies, hey, la- you ladies and gentlemen was, zach was, also went abroad yeah <laughs> with penn state kids. and i did go with everyone we he me and my buddy thought we were going to uh everyone goes to barcelona that's yeah. the hot spot that's the college hot spot yeah, everyone goes go there right and so then me you and got my the buddy salsa went. dancing you got you got all of it you know, the clubs on. are really fun it's <laughs> definitely a fun yeah, place it has to everything a college kid wants yeah but uh then me and my buddy were like oh like uh my buddy's like hey let's go to florence italy like that sounds like a good time yeah. i was like oh yeah like that'd be interesting like i don't really know Probably much calmer. about it like and we went <laughs> and did it scene. and then lo and behold everyone starts coming up to us like oh we're going to florence too we're going to florence too dude it must have been at least half, maybe three quarters of the entire program was Penn State people that we knew too, wow. that we already well, you knew. Tried. You tried. You at least you tried. You did try. Mm, honestly, we didn't. We <laughs> yeah. Once you were <laughs> Sam came up and said one place, and I was like, "Sounds great." Yeah. And then we went anywhere other like, than the United States. Sounds good. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So so yeah, it's those. I feel like those right. at least. Uh, from our time I'm, in school, I'm gonna go out those on are li- the hot spots. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say Matt chose the better yeah, place. Yeah, maybe I didn't Matt. have as many friends as Zach had that yeah, yeah. wanted to go abroad. Maybe so. Matt's not as popular. Yeah. But where did you go, Matt? So I went to, I did like a completely different program, and I went to Austria, mm. Vienna, Austria in particular. Beautiful. Because I was a psych major. This is like where you Freud look at, When you look at pictures, coke. when you look at pictures, <laughs> wait, what? Yeah, this is where Freud did all of his coke oh, and I smoked you cigars, said, and I, I was like, I'm in. I want to go there. I thought you said you did a bunch of different subjects. Yeah. When you look at pictures of Vienna, it doesn't look like a real place. Dude, it's it looks it looks cleanest. it looks like it's out of like Lord of the Rings or like Narnia or something. It looks like it's the perfect. most it's my beautiful favorite place, in the world. place and I haven't been back since. Yeah, got to get but, back there. Yeah, so I went there. Great didn't decision. know a single person. Perfect. And it was a that's program what it's all about, isn't through, it? Dude, well, yeah, Zach? in the end, it was like totally worth it. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it's all about. <laughs> yeah, Zach's going to be silent for most of this <laughs> one. <laughs> She's like stewing over there. Yeah. But, but Florence is sweet. Yeah. Florence break. is cool. I, I've never been to Florence. Ah, I visited Florence. It is cool, but it's a place was. you get in a weekend. You're like, oh, yeah, art, statues, right. churches. Yeah, got it. Italy's kind of the place where you. When you go there, you're supposed to travel all over Italy, not just like stay in one spot, right? Uh, yeah, but it's also then it's just like all right, you go out, you go to rural Italy. It's like uh, you can you can go see like some castles and stuff. Because what's cool about Europe is it's all old as hell, so there's right. a lot of yeah. history. But you can go out and you go to like the vineyards and uh, or you can go to uh, Venice, you know, and that city's right. like float and stuff, and that's cool. But it's just like this you know, like, city that floats. No, yeah, like and, and it is it is cool, but it's just like when you go to Florence, you can understand it in a weekend. You don't need to be there for yeah. three months unless you're like really big into art or like culture and stuff. And right. like that's a place you'd want. Which to you're not. To. You just into getting drunk. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but I can only see so many churches. Yeah, I yeah, get yeah, that. They all have arches. So we the beauty, the, <laughs> the beauty of Vienna, and just the whole area did that have anything to do with you getting into the wilderness side of things did that the alps in vienna probably did. right it had to but i think more so the mindset of like going it like throwing yourself into a place you've never been that you've never been with yeah. people that you don't know right just like the unknown of that it doesn't right. have to be in the wilderness but just like the unknown of travel right is probably what sparked it right because it's like constant it's like constant i wouldn't say adrenaline but like you're adapting trying to take yeah you're trying to take everything in right so quickly because everything is new and you don't have anyone else there that's even familiar at all to you right that that feeling of like trying to experience and soak in as much new stimuli as possible is probably what ultimately pushed me into right like what i did what i do because there are two things that like because you you really, when you were at school, you you tried going all in, doing the, uh, what was it, Green Beret, or uh, what was the, uh, that group, that was five days a week. Oh, early yeah, mornings. it was like ranger training. Ranger training. Yeah. Yeah, and you did that for what, a couple of weeks or something? Yeah, maybe, maybe I made it. Yeah. A week. And I then... remember, yeah. You well, tried at one point, that. you were pretty set on, like, going in, you wanted to be in a combat zone, right? You yeah. wanted to get deployed. No, I was, I was totally and... full-blown on all that, yeah. Right. Like, freshman, sophomore year. 
and you would say Vienna was like the turning point and oh, all that? Oh, dude, I was, yeah, I texted my mom like midway through being abroad and I was like, I don't know if, I, I've, at this point I've already signed my contract with the army. Right. They're paying for all my college and I was like texting my mom and my dad and I was like, one, I don't even know if I want to come back mm. to the U.S. and two, and like I guess the larger thing is like I don't even know if I want to do the army anymore. Right. Like this is... I've enjoyed every single moment of being abroad and traveling around and experiencing like all these different aspects of life 10 times more than I've, ex- than I've enjoyed anything within ROTC. Right. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Ultimately it came down to me like talking with my dad mostly about like not quitting right. something you started. And right. But how old are you at this than- part? This is another thing I feel like is, is such a huge deal with like the system of, Going to high school, going to college. Right. And like, I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah, when like, I was how 18. old? You, you were junior in college. How old are you, junior college? 21. Yeah, yeah I was going to say 21, 21, something yeah. like that. And but that's... I also made this decision to do ROTC when I was 18. Right. Right. Like when you graduated high school. High school. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which is crazy. And yeah. And so you're a kid. And then by the time you hit that, like, junior year, that's really, I feel like when a lot of people have, like, somewhat of a quarter, if you're not having a quarter life crisis, you're at least, like, evaluating right. things yeah, that's you're going finally on. Right. They think say, when you're done. Right. Don't they say, like, the male brain doesn't fully, like, develop so until, like, 25? Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> this is the smartest we're going to be. Yeah. <laughs> this so, is it. This but, like, you're, us. like, all right, so, like, you take into account, like, perhaps your brain isn't fully developed. It's definitely not fully, my brain's not fully developed because of all the drinking and no things dude, that, is, things yeah, i did you're done. this is the smartest you're gonna be yeah i'm probably stupider than i ever was at this point but you have to decide at 18 like your career that's that's right, kind which, of crazy yeah. and then you decided i wanted to go have this experience which is something i've never done before and it totally changed completely changed the way I which is awesome things. yeah so cool so you come back to school after that but so i also cool. and i think this is a combination of how i ultimately ended up in the job that I've been working for since college, I, while I was there abroad, I applied to be a student teacher at an elementary school. And I in ended Vienna, up in Vienna, it's teaching like so English. So, like, or after something? my classes, I would go hop on the train and teach kids English, mm. like right outside the city limits. And I got to work with the kids the entire time, mm, or the, yeah. like the second semester that I was there. Um, so that also, I think, added to like my enjoy, like the enjoyment I have from watching kids like be in a classroom and be themselves, and right. allowing them to also learn right. in this world that I felt like I was learning in the same way they were. Right. Okay. That's so, awesome. Yeah. yeah. That was. I think that was an, an important part in my broad experience. Right. Yeah. So, what did you do that summer then? For work after that, after that spring abroad. Yeah. So while I was abroad, I was like applying for internships that I thought you had to do. Like, I remember I had uh, an interview for BlackRock, which is like this huge financial financial company. company yeah. yeah. And I was going to be in New York, and I like had to put on a button down and a tie for the interview. And I'm sitting there in my apartment in Vienna, talking about shit that I had no idea what right. it meant. And I like finished that interview and then maybe 10 minutes later I had an interview for this company that I worked for now for the past four years to be a trip leader. And it was pretty much like it came down to taking about 12 kids with a co-leader on a trip, on a hiking trip. How'd you hear about this company? My cousin worked for them. Oh, cool. And she just like, I remember she shot me a text after her summer and she was like, this was the most unbelievable experience I've ever had think you might be interested check him out which she sent me that like a year wow. and a half shot in the can dark we, can we say Overland? yeah yeah it's over it? okay that's yeah. the company yeah, yeah. sorry I, I think, think people listening would want to hear what what the company is and yeah. see like what great actually water is, bottles so. i've got a great water bottle from yeah Overland. i got you one of their hydro flasks yeah yeah so the company is overland and it's a smaller company it's pretty much like Knowles or outward bound but smaller more like tailored to this small group experience for right the kids. up in williamstown massachusetts yeah Right. Exactly. Which is right by Williams College. Beautiful town, too. Right. Little, oh, yeah. Both of you have been there. Yeah. Right? We went yeah, riding around your Yeah, horses. we went horseback riding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Can we take a brief aside? <laughs> real quick? I think you have to mention yeah, well, hold, so, hold on real quick. It's, okay. it's a little different than... Because out, Outward Bound is more like for troubled kids, right? Is um, it out, I, feel, I feel like I've I'd known I'd say this one friend. is more... It's like more... The counselors are more involved. 
So we're like in Overland. In Overland. Oh okay. yeah. Overland is more involved with the counselors. So we're like helping them out with all their meals and like showing them how to pack their bags for right. certain ages. But right. yeah, it's definitely a little bit, I'd say like a, it's comfier, comfier than Outward Bound and Knowles yeah, 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 and like yeah, yeah. all those. Very cool. So you go in, you do your interview for Overland. How do you feel about the interview and when you come out? I felt good about it. I get, I think looking back on it now and like, I've also interviewed a lot of different leaders right. working there full time. My interview must have sucked. Hmm. Like I we, had no idea what the company was or like what I was getting into. That's I was what wearing I was, gonna a, say. I was wearing my button up right. from this BlackRock interview still. Like All luckily right. I took off my tie. Right. But well, I was going to ask like were you as excited for this interview as like relative to how much happiness it brought you when you actually got the job, you know what I mean? Like I, yeah. Did you I, understand that, how great of an experience it was going to be when you were taking the interview? Or was it still just another place like, you'd thrown a dart at and right. you were just I'm like, gonna I'm just applying do, to these I'm just, jobs. I'm just going to go do this for like, you know, a summer and it'll look good on my resume kind yeah. of thing. 100% it was a dart. Right. Okay. I like finished this BlackRock interview and I was like, fuck that. Like, I don't want to be doing this right. in New York. I also, there's no way I got the job because I didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a business major. Right. And I remembered my cousin texted me about this company and I was like, well, might as well give it a shot. Why not? And this is earlier, so I like had the interview set up. But the second I started talking with the person interviewing me, Colin Cummings, who I'm still like close with today, have gone on a few trips with him. Like the questions he was asking and the way he was like engaged in my answers and then asking questions based upon my answers, I was like, Oh my god, this is just a real conversation, finally. This isn't just someone sitting in an office ripping through interview questions. Mm -hmm. And it was during the interview where I fell, I think probably for the first time, like fell in love with Overland. <laughs> you go, holy shit, I actually want this job. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. now I'm getting nervous. <laughs> in the interview, the you start am I wearing this button-up yeah, shirt? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I just remember that so clearly. Like, so ending. in the interview, you were like, damn, this sounds like a very, very cool job. So you ask him- A cool it, job, but also like someone who actually cares. Honestly, right. So you the ask them if talking, you can stop right, the, the interview and go do to. three more hours of research. <laughs> I was like, Wait just one second. Yeah, um, I'm totally unprepared for this. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put on a different shirt, and can we reschedule for tomorrow? Because uh, you came in with uh, no shirt on and a jacket. Right. Just talking about finance. Well, so what? What was it? It was Colin who was interviewing Colin, you. Colin. Yeah. So what was it, what was it about his like temperament or his dude? His just energy. Like, he was he wasn't trying to get out of the interview. Which at mm -hmm. that point I've ripped through so many different interviews with like these big companies that I could tell they were they've this is probably like their fiftieth to a hundredth right. college kid they're talking to that day. Right. They have the three bullet points they're gonna ask you and they're gonna shut down the screen and go to the next one. Right. And I hopped on the it was a Skype call with Colin because I was abroad, and usually they, like almost every time they do in person interviews mm -hmm. before they hire anyone, um, but I just remember he like came on and. We didn't start talking about, like, specific job interview questions maybe until, like, 15 minutes in. Nice. Okay. And it was just, like, getting to know each other. Right. And just, like, the whole setting. Like, what – he was wearing, like, pretty casual clothes. He was in this awesome, like, exposed brick office building that he was working in. Right. And just, like, felt like I was talking to one of you guys. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started to realize, like, these are the type of people that I want to be working with. Right. And surround myself with so right. That's, so. Uh, it, that, it's just interesting that it was the person rather than like I mean obviously the job price sounded right. pretty cool because I had no idea what the job was at that right. point even. But then once I started leading, it was everyone that I met, every single kid that I led, like was also right. at the same time teaching me way more about myself than I could ever have learned. Right. So, so interview finishes up with Colin and. Then what? Do you have another one, or is it just like you get the offer? Or? I had a few different interviews, and mm -hmm. I was still doing the ROTC thing. So then my final I, – I got offered a job. This is all while you're abroad? All while I'm abroad. Okay. Finally, I got offered a job to lead um, – I forget. It was a, some hiking trip I got offered to lead. But since I was still doing ROTC, I had to do um, this, like, training camp during the summer – and this, again, comes back to me not knowing anything about the job. 
but pretty much you like lead all summer. You're 24 seven on with these kids. Cause you're hiking somewhere. There's there's like no downtime. And I remember Jonathan, who's a, who was a director at Overland, who was the one who gave me my final offer. I was like, Oh yeah, this sounds great. Like I'm in, I'd love to work for you guys. The only thing is I, uh, have this army training right in the middle of the summer. It's mm. three weeks long. Like that won't be a problem. Right. And he was like, pretty much. I think per, what he wanted to say was like, what the fuck are you talking about? That's right. That <laughs> matters. Problem. That matter. Yeah. That's like the one thing that matters is right. you have to be able, available all summer and pretty much fell through from there. It was like, you can't lead if you have to leave for three weeks. Right. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, whatever. I have to do this. Did the training. Then the next year I got, I applied again. Now I knew a little bit more about the company. I knew I couldn't take <laughs> Had three a year to prepare. Yeah, knew I couldn't take three weeks off in the middle of leading. Right. And led my first trip in uh, Maine with high schoolers. So it's you and one other person. Yeah. One other leader. One other co-leader, and the main trip in particular, we led three different groups of ten kids. How old oh, wow. were they then? They were eighth uh, or seventh and eighth grade. What do you say? Okay. Three different groups. What do you, What do you mean by that? Like three different trips? Yeah, three different trips. Same itinerary. How long? They were two weeks long. Two weeks long. How many miles were you guys? This was a. This was like one of the more tame hiking trips. Okay. Um. So. Yeah, it was seventh and eighth graders. Two weeks long, in Maine, and you had like two days in between. So the entire summer's like six weeks or seven weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, of actual leading, and then there's like a leader opening and a leader closing. Um, but that was the first trip I led, and then my schedule was always like a little weird with the army and now leading. And I came back and led for f- three weeks in the high Sierras of California with the oldest kids, mm. so which is how old are they? Eleventh and twelfth graders. Okay. Oh, yeah, wow. um, which is awesome. Yeah, I've like was able to connect with them a little bit more, have like real conversations. Um, what what's the so? I mean, obviously, you've never really done anything like this before. Never. Yeah. So, what was the training like? The training was intense. Yeah, I bet. Which is awesome. I it reminded me a lot of like military training, just like the mm-hmm. way it was structured and kind of like how much uh, that like the importance they put on understanding the training now so when you got out into the field with the kids you were going to be ready for it right, right. which i i loved it's right. like how i went through college um but the training was intense and then the summer is intense it's like a job that you have to be on 24 7 right and kids are waking You're up and responsible throwing, for yeah, throwing up all over themselves at like two in the morning oh no <laughs> they're coming to you they're getting they're, hammered they're just getting wasted yeah yeah they're coming to you to figure it out <laughs> i'm drunk what do i do right <laughs> I'm 12. So well, listen here. So at one point, because obviously there was a point where you kind of strayed further away from the army and the ROTC more into, do, yeah, into the, the National Guard. Yeah. Right. But like even more so, it seems like you're more involved in wilderness now than you are with the military. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. I'd say that like making the decision to not do active duty and do the National Guard instead and have... Right. A civilian job full time, right? Which is over was Overland since I graduated. That was like a big decision in my life. Was I could graduate and do four years of active duty and then be done, Mm -hmm. or be finished with it, or I could graduate and do the National Guard or reserves for eight years Mm -hmm. and have a civilian job. Right. Okay. So what do you think led you? Because um, like we said earlier, you were pretty gung ho about active duty. Yeah. What was there a moment, or was it like we've been talking about just the build up of all these gradual, things? Gradual, it yeah. had to be gradual. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. it wasn't one day where you're like, all right, like, like if there was Uncle Sam, these kids need need me more. <laughs> no, it was, it was definitely gradual. All okay, right. all yeah. right. It was like multiple things that were happening, and then I would, I was like able to reflect upon it and be like, I'm just I'm a happier person, and I feel better about right. what I'm doing in with overland and helping out these kids or leading these kids, but also them helping like me understand myself. Right. Better. Having these mm-hmm. experiences. Yeah. So it was definitely over time, like mm-hmm. chipping away at me. And then it was just me accepting it. And did you see a lot of, uh, you know, other 
other peers in your program, like as you're going through ROTC, kind of wean out a little bit, like take a step back from the Army a little bit? Mm. Or were most of those guys like, I'm doing Army? Like, in I think it was like, half and half. Okay. There were some that were not going to be convinced otherwise that they were going to go active duty. Mm-hmm. But then it was also an, the other half of them that realized they could get a civilian job, get paid a, probably a lot more money, honestly, mm-hmm. and do the National Guard or Reserves. And right around that junior year of college, it's like when you're hitting all those internships. And right. I think that's when the decision was made for a lot of people. Okay. And I was just pulled in, just like someone would be pulled in the direction of BlackRock. Right. I was pulled in the direction of Overland. Right. And then made that decision. Yeah. Right. So. That's great. Mm-hmm. Pretty happy with it, I'd say. Sounds like it, man. Yeah. I mean, this is, we went to visit you up there, and that place, is it's a beautiful spot out there. I know Dude. the winters are harsh. Yeah, winters there. are tough. We yeah. travel a lot, but when you YouTube, right on the bo- visited. It's so, forever, but Williamstown is on the border of Massachusetts and Vermont. So yeah, it's like right. five minutes from Vermont. Right. So, so when you're going to places around there, you are going in and out of Vermont and Massachusetts. Beautiful area, western, yeah. m- western, and yeah, the Berkshire, yeah, Vermont and really western Massachusetts mountain range. There, uh, how would you describe like the the people that you work with? Um, you know, is there a general kind of vibe? Like, I know they're all, you, you know, they're all different. They're all, you know, individuals. But I mean, like, yeah. is there more of a general vibe that you get with those people? Because, like, it's an outdoorsier crew is what. Yeah, certainly there's like a, with the leaders, I feel like there's a little bit more of not a, I don't want to say cookie cutter, but like, we are all, we all have like the same, we're, we're very like-minded. I think we like hold a few certain values mm-hmm. higher than most people would. And a lot of it like revolves around obviously like the public lands and just like the earth as a whole mm-hmm. and caring for it, kids and how they're going to mature throughout life and like how the adolescent years are pretty important right? in how they ultimately view different things or become attached to certain things. And then also just like, and this is one thing that just like blew me away with the different people that I met at Overland was like just caring for every single person. Mm -hmm. Like I remember my first leader training, I was terrified of this group of people that were all pretty type A, like extroverted, which I am. But now I'm surrounded by 200 of that same person Mm -hmm. who are probably in the end more extroverted than I am. And I just remember being like totally out of my element, not really knowing if this was right for me right when I got there. And someone came up to me who was like this leader that had had she she knew everyone. She's been leading for the past few years and the alpha. She was certainly an alpha. And I was the new guy first year and she came up to me probably because I looked terrified and I was being quiet, standing off to the side. She goes, do you need a new pair of pants? <laughs> yeah. I smelled like shit. I had a huge, just diarrhea of pancake in my pants. <laughs> she was like, Hey, can we figure this out so you can actually get through this training? You go, no, these are my favorite pair of pants. Yeah. I can't take these off. <laughs> um, but I remember she just started talking to me like a normal friend would. Right. And then she asked me, I forget what, what question it was. Or maybe I asked her, I was like, yeah. Or I said to her, I was like, I just feel kind of like out of place. Like these people are so smart and energetic and I just feel lesser than, I didn't say that, but ultimately that's what I was getting at. And she was like, you were, you interviewed and went through the same exact process that every single person went through that was mm. that's here now. And they interviewed thousands of applicants and they chose a hundred of us. Right. Mm-hmm. And she was like, at that point when you were being interviewed, were you a different version of yourself and you're trying to be right now? And I, I didn't answer obviously cause I was right. thinking about it. And she was like, you need to be the exa- the same exact person you were during that interview right? because that's why they hired you. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's why you're the person that you are. Yeah, you wouldn't be here. If and you I just didn't like reme- like having her say that to me, and just like reassuring that like I didn't have to be someone else or try to be this other person that I saw the larger community being was 
incredible because yeah. it's easy to tell yourself that but it's it's hard to yeah it's hard really to convince just, yourself and, right that you are there for a reason yeah and that you've deserved you, right. you deserve to be there and right. hearing that from somebody else who's in there saying right. that to you definitely hits a lot harder yeah. than it would be yeah who has like the respect of everyone right and has been there right yeah so for her to tell me that and just like reassure me as this first year leader just like says more than i can about the community of overland right. leaders like gave they, you a bunch of confidence yeah they're the most unbelievable type of person okay so i want you to keep those unbelievable people in mind when uh connor and i went to visit you yep. <laughs> and uh and keep everything that you had just said there um so we me and connor go up to visit matt up in williams massachusetts in the fall in the fall beautiful beautiful end of the, yeah 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 it was coming and, out yep no, no, it was beautiful it was end of summer early fall yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. okay yeah, yeah. yeah. Beautiful, you know. The, Gons picks me up from the, the train station. The were just starting to change. I remember it was beautiful up there, mm-hmm. gorgeous. And uh, and so you had to work that next day. Like we got up there, just saw you like briefly. And yeah, well, we, well, no, you, I, no, I did no, have no. to pick you up. You did set. not just get up there. You got up there super fucking late, and I had to work the next day. We did. Yeah, we so, did. We did. So Connor, but I did. I did have to pick up. It was a very it just the juxtaposition. I had to pick up Zach at the Newark train station which keep in mind all the positions of the jux right yeah, yeah. i don't there know are diff- there are a few yeah i don't know how many people have been to the newark train station but uh it's it's very different than the glorious foothills of williamstown massachusetts right you feel very safe uh, yes you, you d- yeah you don't feel like any feel danger like is going danger. to happen to you at all it smells like yeah it, it's, it smells great mm-hmm. there no but yeah so i picked up zach from the newark train station Dude, we and always- picking up Zach from the Newark train station. That's true. Now that I'm thinking about yeah. it. Yeah, I don't have and a Why'd you always car. hang out there? Yeah. Did you... I think you lived Fuck there. Fuck your New York City days of working there. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. always begging yeah. for a ride. To yeah, get yeah dude, I don't have a fucking car. Yeah. It was yeah. terrible. Yeah, obviously. Come and grab like, me. Yeah, we dude, also want to hang out with him, though, so right. I guess we have to pick yeah. him up. Right. So the trip started in Newark and and ended up in Williamstown, Mass., which was very, like I said, two very different places we get up there whatever late at night like, yeah, like we, 11 we or midnight up there and stuff and yeah, then, beautiful ride you know, so matt's got work the next day i think we got up there like a thursday night matt's yeah. got work that friday he let us in um totally so, didn't go to your neighbor's house and try to get in their house <laughs> we yeah, chilled on porch couch right. for a while porch couch yeah. was great yeah it was a She's, good time uh, to on that we had porch. like this wrap around deck in the house that i was living in and we just had a couch on the outside deck yeah great that everyone would hang out at beautiful it's, a, it's a good spot yeah, yeah. It but, was perfect. But so uh, Connor and I, had, we had a plan. We knew our Friday was wide open for us to figure it out. Right. Matt like, had work. We knew there was going to be like a party at that night, right? Was prom. It? Yeah. Yeah. That's what that we called Friday it. night. Yeah, it was like right. a big party. It was party the end before. of summer yeah. banger. So we had the day to kill. And although I think we didn't have the day to kill, we were asked to run some errands. A lot of errands. And we did. We did we run did. some errands. We yeah. got some, we got some beer supplies for the, the party. party yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But you guys just got balloons. You went above and beyond. I think we, oh, yeah, yeah we, we did get You got balloons. Yeah. And we were like, oh, wow, these guys are into it. Yeah. Well, you said it was pre said it was prom. It was party. Yeah. There's we're like, balloons. <laughs> we're like, oh, may as well look like yeah, people love that. Yeah, they love that. You got balloons. So so we grabbed those. And then then we decide to. We had the rest of the afternoon to decide what to do. And we decided, we looked it up. Yeah. Like, I think you would pitch to me handful, about... Well, there was a handful of things we could do, I remember. The, one was, like, we could go on a, like, a kayaking trip mm. down a river, I think. But that was, like, kind of far away, and, it you know, it was kind of cold out, so we were like, eh, maybe not. Right. You found, didn't you find, like, a hot air balloon trip we could have taken? Found something else. Something, like, and, you, and you know, obviously, there's hiking right. that you can go around. But and like, we don't know the area, so like, where are we just gonna go hiking? Right. We, I guess we could ask the company of the, hikers, the, the, the <laughs> company we, of hikers, yeah, the company of that hikers that live there that we were, that were living with for that weekend. But so but that somehow, didn't really come to our minds. I I don't remember if it was. I, I think it might have been you. It was definitely me. I yeah. think it was on the drive up. I was like, okay because uh, I'm a big. I like going horseback riding. Whenever I go to uh, distinct part of the country. I like going horseback riding. We, mm-hmm. me and my family, we go to Colorado, we go horseback riding, go to Arizona, go horseback riding. It's a great way to see the country that you're in. And you brought that up. That's right. And then brought I remember, that up and on I was the like, drive up. I also I'm love horseback horse riding. Yeah. And so we had been out there, like in Colorado with my family, like, and always really enjoyed it. It's and it is a really cool way because yeah. you just can go out on some, you know, random kind of rough terrain and stuff, right. and just go out and see. 
just the landscape. Right. So Cons and I are super amped about going horseback riding. We're yeah. Like, bang. We'll knock out our chores. We'll get some balloons. Like we'll look like good guys. We'll show up to Matt's <laughs> office. Yeah. Meet everyone. You know, tell them we're going to do some cool outdoorsy stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll just head out and go horseback riding. <laughs> so we go. We get into Matt's office. Like nice little area in that in that little like main street of yep. the town. Nice yep. little downtown the area. And street. Matt's bopping around. It's a college town. It's to like everyone there. College town. Yeah. Super yeah. small college town. Yeah. And we're meeting everybody. They're all, you know, super nice. And we meet Matt's boss and stuff. Except we tell everybody we tell that yes. we're horseback riding. These are all people who leave hikes, lead yeah, hikes for weeks on The most outdoorsy people they go, you could ever talk to. They go bike packing all yep. the time. They take and, great adventures. And we tell them we're going horseback riding. Every single one of them. Looks at us like... <laughs> yeah. You go with horseback yeah. riding. There was the chuckle. Are you a nerd? Yeah, there was the chuckle. There was the downplay of the horseback riding. And yeah, then I Matt's wasn't a fan gotta of it. stand there like these are my friends yeah, from they, home. These guys are came up now. These are my two best friends. Yeah. Here, and they're both yeah. big horse guys. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, we've talked to many people who have lived in that town for years. Like we already said, very outdoorsy <laughs> people. No one's even thought about going horseback riding. <laughs> no one's let alone actually done riding. it. We were up there for like. Less than twelve hours, and we were on a horse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, These guys, the first really thing we're doing, get we're buying horse. beer, we're yeah. buying balloons, balloons we're going horseback riding. Yeah. <laughs> Knock it off! And it was a great time. Yeah, it was not it a was great a time. Blast. We go out there. This dude had been all over the place. Yes, dude. In, this guy in the rodeo, story. he had been name. leading. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. He said whatever he, farm he, hands. Yeah, he would go to different. Yeah, yeah. Areas. Now, yeah, he said he w- he was he was travel. He was in Montana and in Wyoming, and he was uh, just a ranch hand that was traveling from ranch to ranch, just doing you know, summer work and winter work, whatever he could get his hands on. And he also was like a master at breaking horses. So like he would get hired to do that at ranches yeah. too, to break horses. And then he was like in the rodeo and like got pretty injured doing the rodeo. So he stopped in this guy had a great story, which is another great reason to go horseback riding. Right. Cause who are you going to meet going horseback <laughs> yeah, riding? Who's this guy that owns all these horses in the Berkshires? I don't even think he, he worked for the guy who owned the, the land and owned all the horses. Like he just travels all over the place and does work with horses. Which and is so we cool. have a really uh, wholesome photo of me and Connor horseback well, riding. It's all link in the show. Yeah. Notes. yeah we'll I was put, happy yeah, my you guys horses. got that photo because you left the office and everyone was like, what the fuck, Matt? Like, they're going horseback riding? Like, what are you... <laughs> I still don't know why going? it sounds so ridiculous. And then you sent the picture of the horse, and I think you were wearing the hat. Yeah, I, yeah, 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 I did have, like, a, I did nice, have a like, nice... Like, full brim hat, full brim and you hat. sent the picture yeah. to me, and I showed everyone in the office. Yeah. And I was like, look, it's awesome, it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, I guess so. Well, and the guy, I mean, so when you go, to, there, you know, there's obviously a lot of places throughout the country, there's, like, dude ranches, which, like, specialize in horseback riding trips and stuff like this, but this guy was telling us, like, they have a hunting cabin where like you go hunting in the woods and you have horses there and the way you get around is like traveling on the horses to the hunting locations like well, some of these was pla- it in vermont it was in vermont okay. yeah yeah that makes a lot of sense I, to me it just sounded like anybody <laughs> why does that make a lot of <laughs> yeah, sense Wait. doesn't make any sense no because it's like it's, this isn't gonna because happen none of us in massachusetts yeah, no massachusetts people not in williamstown that. i just I, 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 I did not understand why all your friends just thought it was so ridiculous it just seemed like such a natural thing to do when you're out in the wilderness so, so cons and i say fuck your balloons fuck your yeah, party yeah. pop them all yeah, we're yeah. out of here yeah we brought our horses to the party and we're like yeah look at these guys fuck yeah. your prom yeah <laughs> the guy shows up because you guys stole my horses <laughs> yeah. about 40 miles back. <laughs> These things are great. That was, I, I had a blast, though. Yeah, absolutely. Blast. That whole weekend was great. We yeah. went floating on that little creek. <laughs> <laughs> you mean getting trashed on that little creek? <laughs> yeah. And stomping sand all through the house that I lived in. Oh, did we do that? <laughs> yeah, I just remember getting, we all, well, I got yelled at for it. For all the sand. That creek was awesome though because it would just spit you back out, so you'd only go right. There's about like a natural whirlpool. Like Twenty yards, yeah, the confluence. Was, yeah. yeah, and so you just keep going round and around. We did that for a thirty too long. A thirty pack. Of yeah, beer. Uh, we did that for. Uh, uh, the length of a thirty pack between three people. <laughs> and then we might have been the only twenty year olds that ever played King of the Island. <laughs> and we started wrestling and pushing each other off the island. <laughs> yeah, and then we. <laughs> Then we played basketball. Didn't we? Yeah. Oh my god! I don't that know was... if you guys wanted to. I barely even remember that. You guys remember? So we go back. This we go to this playground. Of... The three of us. Whoa, dude! 
you don't have to emphasize it like that. You don't have to emphasize playground. It was a school playground. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> like, whoa, <laughs> just say it's a basketball it's court. It's a basketball court. Yeah. Relax it was a over school there. Playground. It was the closest basketball court. We had to go walk through this basketball yeah. court. So we're playing basketball there or whatever, and uh, three high school kids, like, yeah. Come up and uh, freshmen or sophomores. Yeah, is, they had to be, to be young. High, this is young after the day on the lake. Yeah, this is after, after, after the thirty. After thirty. This is after the thirty. In the, 30 and the 30. Sandy yeah. House. And so these three kids. Uh, so we decided to play them in three on three. It was because of you two were talking shit about who was the better basketball player the entire time out there. Probably and then, that sounds right. Yeah, we grabbed the basketball. Obviously, and we were like, me, fine. But the three of us right. are going to go play, and we'll it's figure out who's the best. <laughs> And then the high school kids rolled up. <laughs> oh, right. We were playing like horse or something between the three of us, yeah. and then these high school kids should. I think we asked them. I don't think they asked we, us. Yeah, they were like watching had us to have asked yeah, them. Yeah, and we, we challenged like, You guys want to play three on three? <laughs> and I remember in the middle of the three on three they're, game. They're up by like, it's like we're playing to 11. They're like, it's like eight to two. Dude, I thought we were, and I thought we were crushing this kid no. looks at us and goes, yeah, are so you innocently. guys drunk? <laughs> <laughs> you guys drunk or something? Drunk and then right we just, uh, yeah. Not one of our better moments. We're just sweating out all the beer. Yeah. Falling over. I remember you fell on me at one point. I did? Yeah, and I was like, oh, my! I just broke both my knees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the kids knew immediately. That Sounds about it. right. Oh. I totally forgot. Beautiful, that. beautiful Shall town. Beautiful though. town. Beautiful, wonderful town. people. Yeah. Nature. Fantastic. I hate horses. Yeah, none of them like horses. Kids, good I basketball still don't players. Get that. Yeah, that's yeah. good yeah. basketball De- town. Decent, decent, <laughs> decent high school. A lot basketball of Larry players. Birds coming out of that. Yeah. Town. yeah, I still don't to this day don't understand why your friends wanted to make fun of us so much for going horseback <laughs> riding. That was that was an unheard of activity. <laughs> yeah, apparently. It blows my mind that it was. Yeah. But I guess apparently it being in Vermont made so yeah, much sense yeah. to everybody. Yeah. yeah. Were you guys you going to Vermont do, you for don't that do sort of thing? horseback riding in Williamstown, Massachusetts. Yeah. Right. You go up north for that kind of... <laughs> you gotta head to the north for... Baldashery. <laughs> um, so I got, a, I got a couple other questions then. Um, are there any like habits you do daily that you do to like feel like you have more structure or any any kind of usual routines that you do um yeah i'd love to brush my teeth both in the morning and at night i do that electric toothbrush but no nah, the the main routine or like the habit that i have done now i'm on year four um, I've definitely, I think I've, t- I've definitely talked about this mm. to you, um, and Connor probably. I have a five-year journal, so every night, and now I've actually kind of changed it to every morning. I have like four lines that I write about what I did that day, mm. and the journal is set up in a way where it's a page, and it will be the day the date so like today in particular it's like a small journal it's like the quarter size of a notebook yeah i'd say it's like this if you had if you held your hand out it would fit on top of your hand almost perfectly right like a full hand right and then so there are five years along that full page right yeah so each day it says like the day at the top whatever it is october 1st Mm -hmm. and then underneath that it will be a full page of lines but split evenly across those lines will be like, I, well, I started it in 2017. It will say like 2017, four lines, 2018, four lines, and so on. Right. And, and you got uh, me and my sister uh, both doing that journal. Yeah. And it's awesome because I've had because it's so, so many people, get, like so everyone that I hang out with really for more than a day because mm-hmm. I take it out and start writing it at night or in the morning. And they're like, they always ask about it. Every single person, almost that I've traveled with, it's awesome because almost um, the the size of it, um, just how small it is. Like it, you don't feel pressured, like you would open in a full notebook and be like, "Oh, I got to write about all about today, like everything yeah. that I did today or whatever." And it's just like, no, you got like four lines to work with. Just say the big points of today, yeah. and that's it. And you can keep it like you're you're almost always pressed for like the important things you want to add to it because that's how short of an entry you have. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so I'm on year four of that every single day. I haven't missed a day. I wish you were brought it. Ever. I'll take a picture mm. of it so you guys can add it to. The All right. Mm-hmm. I would have just loved to pick, like, a random date and you just. Or today, yeah, and see yeah, what yeah, the hell see we were doing you, today. Yeah, see what you were doing today. That would yeah. be really cool. That would have been cool. Um, God damn it, man. But, yeah, but that's, like, speaking of that, it's like 
I'll read it that night or in the morning when I'm writing the entry and I'll send people texts for, and I'll be like this day, three years ago. Right. This we, is what we were getting wasted. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, this day we got smoked 11 to two <laughs> by a bunch of yeah. freshmen in high school. Yeah, and I think I actually have like quoted that. Are you drunk? <laughs> These high schoolers writing that. But yeah, that's like been a re- like per- probably the most grounding and routine thing I've done now for the past four years. Yeah, yeah, it's it, a very cool thing to do. It's really cool. And it's really cool when what you'll text you us on? and tell us, I haven't overlapped yet. Okay. Yeah, I started in January. So getting closer to it. Nice. Um, I have such a good memory. I don't need to write yeah. anything down. Steel trap. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know exactly what I was doing three <laughs> years ago today. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. In the back, too, like, mine has definitely taken on a lot of character. Like, I, I think in year two started letting people who spent the entire day with me so if I, like, was hanging out with them or on one of these backcountry trips, if they spent the, from, like, the start of the day to the end of the day, I would hand the journal over to them, mm. and I'd ask Let them, them to it. give their entry. Oh, that's cool. Write about whatever they wanted. They had this many lines. Mm, I've never written and input that. that. So never, that's been really cool to now I've never written in on. that journal. You, mm. Dude, you have to get one of these. I'm, no, I've never written in your journal. We've spent days together. Yeah, I guess not. Are you sure you haven't? <laughs> I don't think I have. You're definitely featured uh, many times. Yes, I'm, I'm heavily featured in You'll it. Be featured tonight. Yeah, there you go. The Zach and Connor podcast. Right. If the, if someone was writing like a cast list for your journal, I think I'd be a very big supporting You'd character. Be up there. Yeah. Yeah. The horseback rider. The horseback rider. Horseback rider number one. All right. No, but it's cool because the back of it now too is like taking on my trip to. Peru that I was talking about earlier mm-hmm. in particular everyone got into it oh, it's and awesome. wanted to like write things in the back of it like things that I needed to check out whether it was like albums or oh, yeah, books yeah, yeah. Right. or places to travel to podcasts um, so that I have like these lists of all these different categories now in the back of the journal too that that's awesome people have written in did Zach ask you how wh- what how'd you get this idea of the he didn't know so my mom and my older sister right got one i think i just like decided to buy one for each other and it was like three they had theirs for like three years and then finally i was like i i think i want one of these once i graduated college i was like i want to start one now right so Um, your mom and your sister got you in on it yeah Mm. and they both finished their five-year journal my older sister didn't start again but my mom's on like year seven oh wow she said she's gonna do them yeah, it was a great idea. Yeah. I feel like I should start doing that. Although I feel like most of my it's, days would just be like... Well, dude, that's the thing. Like There are breakfast. definitely days where I'm it like, is, especially right now, back at home, I'm like, right. here I am again. Like The morning's exactly the same. Right. Mm-hmm. But then there are also these entries that I had two years or a year earlier that are right. like absolutely crazy. And you feel lucky to have had those experiences. And I don't know. And, I, I love it. And you can use those blank days to just kind of put your general thoughts that weekend right. or right. something right. in a quick thing. Because, like, if I if I get more than three or four days ahead and I have to reflect on it, eventually it's just, like, work today. Like, <laughs> whatever. It is just, it like, is that cyclical. day's shot. Like, it definitely like, becomes you know, cyclical at points, took, and that's when you can took get a little deeper. Two and a half yeah. poops today. Yeah. 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 We're on schedule. And by <laughs> half, I mean I missed. <laughs> <laughs> Right on the rim. Mom, come clean it up. <laughs> You're 26. Clean <laughs> it up yourself. Stop writing about this in your I took a half. I took, I took a half poop again. <laughs> Maybe if you'd stop shitting, squatting over the toilet while you're writing in your journal, <laughs> you'd make it. Just trying to make every day different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do much today. Right. Yeah. Um, I think one thing we didn't touch upon, Matt, was um, for your, I think it was for your solo bike trip you decked out your car that oh, yeah. eventually made yeah. the trip back from colorado and is now in your possession again yeah. tell us tell us what you did with that because it was super cool yeah so this entire summer i was like leaning more and more so i moved back home after uh i got laid off from overland we like shut down from for the summer ultimately got laid off moved back home from williamstown mass and while I was out traveling out west on my bike, I was like, ah, more and more thinking, like, I don't need a house. I don't need an apartment anymore. And I was getting more and more into the idea that I was going to sell my Jeep, buy a van, 
that then I could build out through the winter while I was home with my dad because he has like all the equipment that I would need and mm -hmm. honestly a lot of the skill that it would take. Right. Um, so I was thinking like, yeah, I'll build out a van, buy a van, do that, then go on the road. And that like slowly morphed into maybe I'll sell my Jeep and buy a Tacoma truck, buy a cab for it, build out the back of the truck. Like right. it's the same exact idea, a little bit cheaper. Right. And then after I f like figure out the measurements for the truck, I was like, I feel like my the back of my Jeep right now that I have is going to be the same size if I put the if I take out the seats or put the seats all the way down. So I put the seats down, measured it all out, and I was like, sweet, don't have to do anything now. I don't have to sell or buy anything. Mm -hmm. And I looked up, uh, I just went online and looked up like do-it-yourself bed frames, and eventually just like measured out the back of my Jeep and over the course of three days built out a bed frame that fits like perfectly and snug in the back of my Jeep and then built these two long 72 inch drawers that go underneath it that I can pack all my bike gear in and all the clothing that I would need like clothing, food, grills to pretty much live on the road. And then I have a rack on top of my car where I put both my bikes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so you're set and you're I'm set, set for and trips. then I was like, for ne now it's been like, I go out on a trip and because I'm still doing the national guard, I come back one time a month, but I'm living out of my Jeep Right. and I like go and bike around, come back, do the army thing, drive back to wherever I want to go. And yeah, it's been awesome. Yeah, it's great. And I think eventually we'll lead to like either a van or one of those like small homes because you really don't need the space that people in historically have bought to like live right mm -hmm. living out of my car has been perfect for the right. most part i don't yeah i don't think everybody could do that you're you're certainly built for that yeah there's there's a certain type of person for sure right right Which but even i didn't realize like how little i actually needed to and definitely like being outside helps but like be happy ultimately right you don't need a lot yeah yeah it's, so that's a great overarching question what do you what do you think you've learned mostly about yourself from all of these experiences because yeah. and i know that's a really large question and you know answer it however you want but you are doing something very different than you know the normal if you want to say people are doing yeah. and you are built for it um but what, if, what what's the biggest thing you've got out of it it sounded like you were kind of hitting it right there yeah that's definitely part of it i also think and I have, like, thought about this a lot over the past few months, but, like, within the, like, right now, especially with, like, the Discord, obviously you can't deny that the country is going through. It's been nothing that I've, like, learned about myself, but it has been, like, so reassuring to be on the road traveling around and to almost, like, make yourself dependent on other people mm -hmm. where you like hear all this awful stuff in the media and it is awful like a lot of it that you hear is awful but then to be on the road and depend on other people and the kindness of other people everywhere i go right solo traveling especially is like people want to help right mm -hmm. for the most part people are looking to do good to others and help you out and i think because of the situation we're in right now just within history in this year having that as like a constant reminder of like everyone trying to help out and do good hmm. that i've come in contact with for the most part again this isn't everyone but that's been like the most sobering thing and like honestly in the yeah, end who, gives who, me faith who would think it, it would take you going out on the road to you know Des oh, not desolate places, but out in the wilderness to figure out how, you know, nice people can actually be. Yeah, it's not even that they're, like, nice. And sometimes they, like, are pretty skeptical of what you're doing and are, like, standoffish of, mm -hmm. the like, what you're doing and how you're living. But at the end of the day, the, like, the ultimate emotion, not even, like, what they want for you is to somehow help you out. 
Right. So they don't have to be nice. Right. They mm-hmm. certainly don't have to be nice or like don't have to go out of their way, but they're not going to do something that again like goes out of their way to be mean right. or okay. hurt you. So it's what more like almost respect or just like I, I just think like humans like to I th- like it makes them feel better if they're helping out another human. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think that's like ultimately what's inside everyone and being on the road and traveling, I've experienced it so much every single day that it get, it makes me feel a lot better about right. the human race. Like really reinforces that idea every time you go out. And yeah. And nice. I'm not bombarded with like the worst headlines in the news right. every time, mm. it, like throughout the day. Apart from the Craigslist, Craigslist guy, that guy didn't. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but again, he still took him to the border. He, he's he, trying he to help did, me just out. Didn't suck him he off. Did still, <laughs> he did still. I'm take not him helping to him, him out. Yes, that's what I guess. I, 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 you know, during the during these times of you know COVID and everything that's going on, it it is nice to see silver linings that happen in this spot. I know, I know. For me, one of the silver linings is like. I get to see my nephew a lot more. Yeah. Um, and I know for silver linings for, you know, my brother was, they're not going to work. So they're getting to see their, you know, one year old kid every day instead. Yeah. Um, it sounds like for you, this was like, you know, I don't want to say a perfect, you know, situation, but it, it kind of was, you didn't have anything else going on. Yeah. You really got to go like full gung ho of doing something you really wanted to do. Yeah, like something for myself, which I think over the past few months, I was then also able to, like, take the time and really think about what I want to do next. Right. Like, and do you think you would have done all these trips if this pandemic and the state no of... Way. Right. No yeah. way. Right. Nothing even close. Yeah. And who knows, where, like, where I would have... and Because it was going to be my last summer at Overland anyway. No matter what, right. I, like, made that decision. I didn't want to stay in this small town anymore. I mm. loved it. I loved every part of it. Yeah. But I think I was getting to the point where I was too comfortable and like falling in love with it too much mm. that if I didn't get out at the end of the summer, I would have stayed there mm-hmm. for who knows how long. What's interesting about you guys saying like you being able to get out more and stuff and just like this opportunity for for everybody kind of being able to do things like right. trying to find pockets of happiness and and, and and bettering yourself i guess in, right in these and, tough times and, and my sister what was nice was like my sister lives in tampa she's able to work remote so she right. can so come she up came home. and it was the first time me her and my brother would be able to all be at the house yeah. right. the first time since like my brother was in high school right. essentially you know right. he's like six Damn. years older but uh i had a buddy of mine who's a, a i have a buddy of mine who's a skydiving instructor in texas and he said normally like every year they'll get like or every summer they'll get like 800 people doing it he said this summer 1600 people doing it yeah oh he's shit. like people and he's it would ask them every time like why are you doing this whatever he's like they i finally have the time like i've always wanted to do this i right. finally have the time and i think like what's been nice with this is it gives people like uh almost a chance to take a step back and like reevaluate themselves reevaluate what they value yeah and uh maybe take some more risks or go on some more trips i see a lot of more people going on hikes like yeah. out west and right wherever even just around here bike shops just, completely sold out of all their in like retail oh, that's bikes. Cool. yeah mm-hmm. just kind of doing some of the things that have been kind of put to the side right with, uh you know with having to work right. every single day right so. as terrible of a time it is it, it, it was like a nice little time out from the daily you know grind of just getting you know getting stuff done yeah for sure Realize, like what's important Finding, finding your pockets with it. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, I like that saying. It's like finding the pockets of happiness. Because mm-hmm. that's exactly what it is. You have yeah. the time to really explore them. Right. Mm-hmm. That's great. Um, so what's something you would tell yourself when you're younger? Like, say, like, towards the end of high school, you know, because I feel like probably freshman, yeah, sophomore yeah, year in high all school. Given all the changes that yeah. you just spoke about. Like, freshman, sophomore year, you're, you're kind of just, like, in whatever the high school scene. Like, junior, senior, you're starting to think, like, Oh, like, what am I going to do? Like, what, what's, yeah. what's my next step at least? Like, school, like, what do I sort of want to do after that? Like, what's a piece of advice that you would give yourself for that period of time? And if if that's not, like, clear enough for you, then maybe, you know, sort of earlier in college when you're starting to realize, like, oh, maybe this Army thing isn't for me. Like, whenever that sort of tipping point period was mm-hmm. for you, like, what would you kind of say to yourself, um... 
Yeah, so is it any, like, am I giving my high school, the end of high school self-advice or my I, college self-advice? You, you just, you've seen, like, to us, at least, it seems like you've gone, there's been these, not, like he said, tipping points necessarily, but there has been moments where you've made decisions to change the course of, you know, the trajectory of your career or whatnot, yeah. like, what... What were the most important decisions you made, and what was what would be the advice be to yourself if you had to go through those decisions? Like, what would you wish you have known going through those decisions again? Because you don't make a big decision without dealing with a bunch of uncertainty, and right. uncertainty can make you anxious and oh, totally and nervous, right? And uh, th- and you don't know the future. You yeah, know? I think what it's I really love that question but i think what i would say to myself and like this might sound like a cop-out but because of how anxious every decision would make me i think i would tell myself at any point now whether it was high the end of high school middle of college when i went abroad i would just tell myself like whatever decision you're going to make whether you feel good about it or you feel terrible about it, or you feel like it's the wrong or right decision, it's going to shape who you are in the end. And you're going to be able to like, at least learn about yourself from that decision. Hmm. So though it might like, feel like it was now a decision that's controlling your life or pushing you in a certain direction, Mm -hmm. you're always in control. That's what I probably would ultimately say is like, it's your life. You're in control. And yeah, this don't is let just you tell yourself you're not in control. a situation you're learning from. Mm-hmm. So don't feel like it's the end, like the end all be all. Right. If you make the wrong decision. Right. There's not a wrong decision. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like, I don't know, at least what I always heard growing up was like, you have to make a decision and you have to stick with it. Like people don't like, I don't even want to use the word quitters, but people don't like, it seems like it doesn't look good on your resume if you've had varying right. different jobs and very different careers. Where what I found is like those are the more interesting people that mm. you come across is like matter. I did this and then I did this, didn't like this so much, so I started doing this. Like those those are like I don't know, those are the Just pe- like how your major doesn't matter in college. Right. Right. You're going to learn everything you need to learn at the job if you get it. Right. So I think that's that would ultimately be if I had to say like one line for advice I'd give myself, it's like stop worrying, make right. a decision, and learn from it. Right. Mm. That would be it. Right, because it's not your decision is not the end all be all of what's going to happen to not you. All, you yeah. can always decide to do something else. And and like you said, like I, I mean, you learn you learn more from your failures than you do your successes. So even if you make this decision and you fail at it, you feel you're going to learn yeah. just as much, if not more, out of that situation about yourself and about you know what you want to do eventually 100 percent. i think that point you brought up about control is really interesting because i saw there was a study where they did uh in senior homes about uh you know seniors who had very regimented uh schedules and mm-hmm. like they had you know whatever the helpers coming around taking them to do everything you can only eat this meal or whatever right. and then they studied the seniors who would trade their meals for to get more desserts mm. or uh they would rearrange the furniture in their rooms who you know they're supposed to stay the same way right and the seniors that changed and broke those rules and took control for themselves uh ended up living longer uh, like staving off Alzheimer's and dementia wow. and like kind of pushing that off. And yeah. it was just sort of, it's like that Lotus of control where it's like, as long as you feel like you're in control right. of your life, um, Damn. then you feel like you kind of have more power over your life. And, and that makes know, a lot of sense. Of, yeah. I, yeah. I thought it was, I thought that's it was really, really cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm going to go home and uh, change around my bed and my dresser and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the next step. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, think... I'm living back at home and I'm living in a room that my parents designed. So I, 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 <laughs> what I, I, does that say for me? Yeah. I got, I got to, I got to change a couple Matt's of things. Gonna go, Matt's just going to go take a dump on his toilet. So yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to put the, dump. I'm going to put the end table that's next to my bed on the other side of my bed. <laughs> that's going to so different. It's gonna make me oh, a little bit longer. But... Um, is, I, I mean, I guess kind of wrapping this up, um, is there any, it, like, we already went over the advice you'd give to yourself, but, like, as an overarching theme, like, what, I don't want to say, like, what do you live by, but, like, if you had to break it down into, like, 
what heavy heavy question it is a it's a very heavy question but i I feel like it's a good question like if you were god yeah if you were god what would you what would would you tell jesus to tell the rest of us um but no like what what do you fall back on like what like when when you're down or you know even when you're up like what do you fall back on like what is there something that drives you more than anything else hmm Yeah, I'm trying to think. Not having a job, being able to do what I love right now, I haven't like been in that mind state in a while, like that where I feel like totally worn out and down. So I have to think back to like the last time that I. <laughs> yeah, like, well, maybe that's maybe things have kind of may- been too good and awesome. Yeah, for, I just well, maybe, love biking. But, no, but maybe that's <laughs> no, but I, yeah, maybe I, that maybe that's kind of what I'm getting at. Maybe maybe it is biking that I fought like, or just doing things outdoors with my friends. Right, because right, want, right, yeah. right now you're doing you're in a lucky opportunity where you're doing the only things that you want to do. And is this the most happy you've ever been? probably and it's and i'm like there there are times on the bike where i'm like screaming at the wind or like i'm screaming at right. my chain that can't get into the right gear and i'm i'm like angry and i'm right. more pissed than i can even remember the last time i've been that angry All right. but at the same time i'm like as soon as i i can reflect on that i'm like this is what i'm angry about this is what i'm getting frustrated about I'm doing something that I love and I'm right. yelling at the wind and I'm yelling at my bike. Like yeah. when you put it in that kind of perspective of like, I'd say that honestly, that's probably when I get most down is like the fact that I can let myself get that worked up about something that doesn't matter right. or that's something I'm privileged to be able to do. Right. Reflecting on that is when I feel I am embarrassed that I get that angry right well it just goes to show you that that it's such a human thing because you're like you said you're doing exactly what you love right. you probably couldn't be wish you were doing anything else yet you're still getting hung up yeah there are things, things that are always going to like get under your nerve like, right get under your skin and push you to that point but i think it's really healthy to have the highs and lows right and to have these like peaks and then drop down into these valleys all within the same day that it's like emotions are a good thing right and to remind and, yourself of that right and keeping a perspective on it and then that like right. to to be able to understand yeah the perspective yeah to be like, able to think back on it and realize what was happening in exactly that moment. Yeah, yeah for sure that's great yeah i i mean th- this has been great man thanks thanks for coming on this this has been yeah, this is, a ton of yeah, fun and a blast i could do this all night yeah this is yeah, awesome great um Awesome, man. Yeah, I guess we'll wrap, wrap this up. up. Yeah. Sweet. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Matt Duncan, everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of After School Program. You can check out our website at ASPPOD.com for show notes and transcripts, and follow us on social at ASPPOD. The links are in the description. Make sure to subscribe and tell your friends to listen every Tuesday.